Hey everybody, welcome to Rod Remember, the best board game industry has to offer. And for the final week of September, it's gonna be busy. If all goes to plan, I'll let
Hello, Ruel. How are you? Good. How are you, Richard? I'm fine now that I heard you in my ear because I just remembered only at the last second to unmute yeah. both of us. Hey, audience. Perfect. How are you? Can you see us? Can you hear us? Let us do the typical live stream uh, dance that we must do to make sure everything's going okay. That's right. Oh, oh. man. Okay. It looks like everyone can uh, hear us and see us. Good, good, good. Thank you, friends. Welcome uh, to the latest and hopefully greatest episode of the r and Show. We're on 51. We're on the other side now of yes. 50, so huh. this is exciting. <laughs> or now begins the slow, inevitable decline. <laughs> But one can be excited oh, for yeah. Well, I, I hope not. Well, but we, we shall see. <laughs> oh, hey, Goblin, thank you for resubscribing. Getting ever closer to unlocking more stuff. Speaking of unlocking more stuff, uh, we're doing the R&R this week, doing some back and forth with you, the audience. Next week, uh, because it got unlocked a billion years ago, there was a bonus show, and I'm going to be uh, streaming Great Western Trail Argentina. We do a live playthrough of that. And then... Nice. The week after that, I believe, or am I, rem am I remembering the calendar wrong? When did we talk about this? Oh, uh, man. What, what is, what, what's the date today? Today's the 27th, so we've I, got October coming up, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I should have just had my calendar open. That would have helped quite a bit with this. Yeah, I'm going to look see. because uh, October is going to be a bit of a funky month folks yeah uh you're gonna see less of me and more of that guy because yes next week i'm doing uh great western trail argentina and then on the 11th and the 18th i am gonna be mia i am gonna be living life on the road once more as jen wow. and i go down to california to pick up our brand new incredibly old 20 year um ancient rv that we just bought oh nice. i'm so excited that congratulations that's so cool and you know you were just talking about it on the podcast uh, michelle and i were uh, really excited for you because I, I i'm curious to see how this goes i i've never lived on the road like that and mm. i've never had an rv um so i mean of course we hope everything goes well and i'm sure you're excited about this next uh, adventure uh, yeah, I, I, we, we kind of vacillate between excitement and sheer pure panic terror <laughs> um yeah Yo, uh, Jim's like, oh my God, looking at how much it costs. This is the most expensive car we've ever bought by a mile. And um, our brother, our brother-in-law, Ron, who helped us, you know, um, by checking it out and, um, you know, taking it for a test drive and all that, because he's a real RV expert. He said, no, 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 it's not the uh, cheapest car. It's, or it's not the most expensive car. It's the cheapest house you'll ever buy. Um, because, nice. uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's the way we keep looking at it. We're very excited. And um, I figure... I, I, we were just talking about before we started, and I mentioned, I don't know if the audience cares, but I could put a video on screen if people would like to see where uh, I will be living a third of my life in the month of October and not being uh, seeing you folks. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm audience? voting yes. Let's see the video. Folks, I, you know, friends in chat that are viewing right now, we're going to watch it. We, we got to watch it, right? I mean, yes, yes, I, yes. I vote for it, yeah. <laughs> yep. Now, I should say, this is not the one we bought. The one we bought, um, we, we were actually transferring the money today, so it has been taken offline. But this is just a random video that was recorded back in 2011 when it was only a 10-year-old RV. Um, oh, wow. Let's see here. Uh, oh, r, r YouTube. And, of course, the browser has forgotten what it's... <laughs> Uh, executable name is so I have to change it and then I have to change it back there we go oh oh okay so this is a big beast this is a uh, it's a brave 30w uh, 2003 um wow so it's actually supposedly you'd think a 30w but it's it's closer to 31 feet long jen and i have in the Whoa. past successfully test driven a 36 footer which was really 37 feet and we were fairly comfortable so we think we'll be fine with this uh it's winnebago wow. and it's interesting we have been spending months uh looking at rvs we actually went to an rv show recently and you know saw all the latest and greatest and it seems like man new rvs are are garbage. They're cheaply constructed. They oh. look like crap on the inside. They look like places you wouldn't want to be. They look like high, uh, new high-end uh, hotel lobbies or something like that. This huh. is an older one. This is, uh, it was described to us in one place as one of the last greats. Uh, back when they were made homey and um, you know inviting wow. with uh, you know a place you'd actually want to live instead of a something that looks like a hotel lobby. Also made back when it was four x three CRT TVs, um, as you okay. uh, briefly saw there. Although uh, one thing that was nice about this is at some point they did a conversion and took the four x three TV out and put a nice flat screen in position. This is not particularly exciting. Let me go on ahead and oh yeah, here we go. 
Yes, yes, wow. yes. Uh, man, every video of an RV, all they want to do is just open every single drawer. Um, and I appreciate <laughs> why, because you don't have much storage space, so it's all about the storage space. Um, wow. Old enough to still have a CD player in it. Nice. Uh, leveling hydraulics. Uh, we have more miles than that, quite a bit more miles than that, but uh, uh-huh. to be able to get it as cheap as we did. But turn around, random RV salesperson. <laughs> so there's our table. I think that nice. looks like a pretty sizable table to be able to play games. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and we, we like the dinette approach. Of course, this whole thing can convert to be, uh, I think, not quite a queen-size bed. But obviously, we're going to leave it like that. Um, we're going to be on the road for two weeks going down to California uh, to my brother-in-law's because he actually did all the um, upfront, in-person negotiation. He actually talked them down by 4000 bucks. Thank you, Ron. Nice. Very wow. much. Uh, and... Um, so we got we have to fly down there and then get it go through RV school with Ron cuz he is an RV super expert. He could easily make a career out of just doing RV inspections for people and getting paid for it easily. Oh wow. He is so knowledgeable. Uh-huh. Um and so and then we'll drive back up. We figure we're going to drive slow along the uh California and Oregon coast, that'll take, I think it's eight days, which is why I'll be um, MIA for two weeks and you will be filling in. Uh, yes. we already, we're already talking about what you might do for the first week and the second week. I'm excited if it all so comes to fruition. Very, very I cool. Can't wait. And yeah. we'll just be driving and playing games on that table. Wow. Um, questions. So, yes. d- are you required to get a different driver's license? Or? Uh, some states require you to get a driver's license if you go to a big enough um, rig. Uh, there's like a okay. called a super class C, which is closer yeah. to an actual big rig than an RV. But no, this you are not required anywhere in the 50 uh, states, as far as I know, um, because. It's well, actually, it's interesting. This is a class A, which basically means it is a bus. It is kind of on a bus frame rather than a big van frame. But okay. um, yeah, uh, you know, we've we've done the research into that. We do. You need to get a special license to drive a motorcycle, but not this thing. And you wow. know, this thing could do a lot more damage. Um, but right, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, and you know, cool. and, and okay. we're nervous about you know it is big and all that, but. People who are much worse drivers than us are able to drive these things around all the time with no problem. So I'm yeah. assuming we will be able to handle it. Um, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, we love everything about this layout, the double sink, this little, um, you know, there's, there's a few things that are really unique about it. Actually, one of my favorite things, you can barely briefly see, RV windows, the bedroom is always a dark, dank little cave in the back. But oh, this okay. is back when they put windows in the uh, bedroom. So it's surrounded by these three big windows. It's very bright and open and airy. And of course, then you can just close the blinds when you're going to sleep and all that. Um, nice. You know, you can be on the bed, but turn around and see all the way to the front of the rig. Often the beds are on kind of like a side slide. So if you go into the bedroom, you're really kind of disconnected from the rest of the rig. And yeah. Um, yeah, and Jen really likes the layout of the kitchen. It's super unique. Most uh, RVs just have a galley kitchen where if you're trying to... Uh, go back, go back, go back. I, All righty. Yes, it's it's got a ceiling. You're right, buddy. So <laughs> you know this one where she can kind of be tucked in. If I'm walking by, I don't bump into her. We ran into yep. that a lot uh, with the 27-footer when we were in Alaska. So she saw this and said, oh my God. I, I so love that layout and we, we, we love the you know the, the light floral pattern that's everywhere and um, yeah and again you know these were back when RVs were made strong built to last as opposed to now where I mean you know you'd have to pay 200,000 for a thing that as soon as you get it on the road it'll start breaking down whereas this has I mean actually it's interesting Ron said after I mean he spent two hours you know checking every square inch of this thing going on an incredibly long test drive he said this is in great condition for a five-year-old let alone a 20-year-old oh, RV nice. which is what it is so great. yeah um wow and, That's and, and you know and if, if it turns out we try a few times we're like oh you know what this isn't for us um we'll probably be able to flip it and hardly lose anything on it at all because it's already oh, done good. all its depreciation yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good news. Uh, you know, I, I saw in the first part of that video, like it white. It looks like it widens or whatever. Mm-hmm. What is that part? That is very, very common and um, mid to upper end RVs where they, it's called a slide. Uh, actually, I'll just come back to it. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, and just I will. So basically, you get to the uh, the park wherever yeah, you're going. You you mm-hmm. get it all leveled out, and then you push a button, and suddenly it becomes. Not a narrow little sausage tube that you have to live in, but something that um, has breathing room. So that's oh. the slide as it comes out, and it's basically okay. the dinette and the kitchen area all slides out, so you have 
a decent amount of maneuvering room in the okay. living room, such as it is. Nice. You know, in these okay. days, I mean, slides are becoming so common. You'll see big ones that have like two or three slides on them and whatnot. Wow. This is a little bit more, um, oh, what would you call it? Uh, less ambitious, but that's okay with us. I mean, the more slides we have, that's just another thing that could break down. So we were kind of happy there was only one. Plus, a lot of times, the RVs will have a slide on one side and a slide on the other. And if you extend them both, that makes your RV literally the width of two RVs. And then you're going to have Whoa. a harder time at a campground finding a spot that you'll fit in. Right. We, I know a lot about RVs now. I have spent months <laughs> um, studying and watching lots of, here's the five things you need to know. And I wish we'd known this when we started. I've watched so many hours of videos. And um, yeah, we can't wait to give it a go. And uh, yeah, and, and take some games on the road and just relax because we had such a great time in Alaska. It was so amazing. So this is, uh, if this works out, this signals the, um, you know, the, the second chapter. Or maybe it's our third chapter. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. So exciting. That That's great. I'm happy for all. I'm going to be uh, honest when you, you told me, hey, we're going to get this uh, 20 year old R RV. My mind immediately went to Breaking Bad. I was like, oh, oh. no, is he going to get that type of RV? <laughs> is this just a sign that he's getting into a new uh, quote unquote yep, yes. business? <laughs> <laughs> But no, this thing looks great. I mean, I you know I had no idea that twenty year old Winnebago would look that cool and be that you know I, it looks modern to me. Yeah, you know? well, actually, that's the thing. It looks better if you were to look at a, this same model Winnebago today. You would say, oh, it looks like you're trying to make you feel like you're in a space shuttle or something like that. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it, there's there's a market for that sort of thing. You know how for the last few years, geez, maybe even almost a decade now, the hot thing in interior design is gray. Paint your walls yeah. gray. Get what is with that? Where did that come from? Yeah, I guess it's we're in the future, you know. Yes, I, I suppose so. And the future is gray, but yeah, <laughs> you go back twenty years and things look nice and homey and a place you'd want to spend more than ten minutes in. Um, yeah, especially yeah. your bedroom. Like I, I want that thing to be super comfortable and like like you said, I I would not want like some cave. I, I love the fact that that one has windows and yeah, and, you know, yeah. just chill in there and yeah. Oh, very nice. Wow. How exciting. So you do you like, um, so when you go see Ron, you're going to, you know, get the RV and everything. Do you, is he going to teach you how to drive it basically? I mean, you, yeah, you've driven yeah. already. Yeah. Right? He's going to pick it up, bring it back. Uh, they, they live in uh, central California. They've got a little bit of land. Okay. Um, in the foothills, uh, that my sister-in-law bought many, many years ago at a screaming price and they should freaking sell it now they should totally oh. sell it uh considering how much it is appreciated over the last whatever it is 20 years since you bought that land um yeah. so they're just going to keep it there for us we will fly up uh jen has scheduled we have two days of ron's rv school with him nice. to learn all the ins and outs maybe we'll take a day longer maybe we'll leave sooner the whole point of rv living is you can make it up as you go you don't have to yeah. worry about schedules you just do whatever you want yeah that, that's that's so cool yeah you're just Get on the road and wherever you want to stop, there, there it is. Oh, that's so cool! I'm so excited for you, Michelle and I. You know, we had our conversations like, "Hey, could we do this in the yeah. future?" And I think uh, I would. Uh, I think I'm more along the lines of you. I'm like, "Yeah, let's just do it." But then Michelle's a little more reserved. Like, ah, I don't know if I could totally do it. You know, I was like, "Yeah, you know, maybe go for a couple of weeks, you know, a month at a time or something." I don't know, but yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. That's we we start. Yeah. The other thing is where we live. We live in a little, um, basically, what's it called? Not an RV park. We live in a manufactured home estate. It's all manufactured mm -hmm. homes. And when this estate was set up, two lots were set aside to never build homes on, but instead become a big, a common parking area. Uh, mm -hmm. Because this whole place was originally designed to be a senior's uh, retirement area. And of course, mm -hmm. a lot of seniors have RVs. So there's like um, a ton, we have a ton of space to park year round and it only costs $10 a month. To, uh, oh, wow. to take one wow. of those slots, which is crazy. I mean, er elsewhere, people have to pay 100 200 bucks a month to park their RV in some dedicated place. So yeah. we get it. We spend a couple weeks with it. We And um, hey, you know what? Maybe we go out in um, you know in November or maybe we go out in February, whatever. We, 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 uh, we, we have it. We can, you know, a long weekend means we can take the dogs with us, means um, yeah. you know, we can just yeah. play it by ear, go wherever we want. There's so much of the, even though both Jen and I spent a sizable portion of our teen and adult life and her entire childhood in the Pacific Northwest. There's so little of it that we've seen, you yeah. know, and then going up to Canada, you know, coming back down to SoCal, we will definitely have yes. to swing by. Uh, Please do. Um, yeah. And, Shay and everybody else. That'll be cool. Definitely. Too. Oh, wow. Oh. That's so cool. 
Uh, friends, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. This is the r and pre-show. And yes. <laughs> um, we do talk about games every now and then. <laughs> I, I'm finding it harder to bring myself to talk about games these days. My mind is <laughs> elsewhere. But geez, Louise, this week, like in the last 48 hours, six games went live on Kickstarter that we had to cover. It's 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 just been... I, mean, I think this yeah. is the last bigger raw, and I think it's going to slow down a little bit for the rest of the year. But Tainted right. Grail just went live today. I feel so bad. One of the games I covered yesterday, um, cute little game called Mind Your Business, had the uh-huh. misfortune of launching the same day as Terraforming Mars, the dice game. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, there's only so much that can be done. But yeah. yeah. Uh, Bink says the games to bring on an RV uh, include uh, their choices Parks, mm. Cascadia, Everdale, Morals, Photosynthesis, Friday, and Robinson Crusoe. I think those are all excellent choices. Those are all excellent choices. I agree. So, and, you know, some of them very thematically appropriate, too. I actually did a uh, top 10 games to take on an RV, and I had very unorthodox uh, choices because uh, mm-hmm. I put Gloomhaven on there. I mean, right, you right. saw Someone that table. That in chat. Gloomhaven <laughs> yeah. could be played on that table if you use the app. Because if you use the, um, oh, the digital yeah. companion app, that that removes like 30% of the game from the table. You know, all the, yeah. the, all the monster the boards bits. and the monster decks of cards and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I won't be taking it in, uh, in October. I do have a couple of games I want to take including one in the top 10 we're about to do. Uh, ooh, ooh, I'm, 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 you know, when I saw it, like, okay, I have to get this. I have to take this on the road with me. But the nice. next time we go out, I will be taking Jaws of the Lion on the road, and we will finish the campaign before we cool. get Frosthaven. Fingers crossed. All right. All right. But anyway, uh, yes, Kabuki more talking says, about games. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, Kabuki says the R&R and RV show. <laughs> yes. Love that. That is very appropriate. I mean, we're uh, actually flying down on the day that you will do the first episode. But once we're on the okay. road, I'll try to film a little bit so that when you do the second live stream for the second week that I'm not there, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. try to send you some videos so you'll be able to say, okay, here's where we are. Look, we're actually playing it. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so you'll I, be able I would to show love that to do that. To that. Uh, yeah, so for that second show that I do, so like, hey, here's an update from Richard and we can show the video. Because I, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people enjoyed the videos that you did on your last trip. You know, Oh, yeah, Alaska. just those quickies, yeah. Yeah, those are great. You know, yeah, definitely do those. Uh, so do you get like this killer hotspot now so you can have internet access wherever you are? Well, we're not going that... really too far off the grid right now. So I okay. imagine our mobile phones will work fine. You know, okay, just our, cool. our mobile data will be okay. I, yeah. I assume I mean, I, that, that could blow up in my face. In Alaska, it did not work at all. But, I, you know, California coast, Oregon coast, I imagine it's going to be fine. Be Here's okay. the one thing we're worried about that might be a slight dampener on the, uh, pro, uh, the, uh, the event is, mm-hmm. let's see, where am I? Boop! Look what I got! Oh, whoa! What? So, update. Let's get an update on the foot. Yes. How is everything? What is that thing? It's Rado's foot watch. Uh, the next step. <laughs> uh, uh, I finally went and saw a doctor yesterday because it was getting so much better. Like uh-huh. early last week, I was like, you know, I can put my full weight on, and only if I do like kind of this weird little lateral squeeze do I see anything. So I made a mistake, Ruel. I thought everything's fine, and I wore a pair of socks for an hour. And a socks, a pair really? of loose socks, and the next morning, it like I went back to two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh my and like, goodness! Okay, I need to go see somebody. I just saw them yesterday. They did X-rays. I'm waiting to hear a radiologist. I'm gonna hopefully get in to see a podiatrist. But in the meantime, they gave me this thing, and it helps a lot. I was really shocked because well, crutches suck. Oh my oh, god, do yeah. crutches suck? Tell me all about it, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you crutching your way around um, when we were in Vegas at yep, Dice Tower yep. West. And, uh, oh my God, I mean, I'm still, I mean, I got, we bought a pair of nice but cheap crutches from uh, Goodwill the other day because I was yeah. just like, okay, we have to, I, have, I can't just stay in, inside forever. And I, I've got bruising all along here and here. Oh, it's no. just horrible. Yeah, yeah. I it, guess maybe you're just, just used to it. I got used to it, but yeah, I mean, they suck. Uh, they, they do. So that is that a special like orthopedic? Shoe oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like Let's see. Sandals? It's uh, yeah, it's basically just like an oversized uh, pair of sandals for I don't know Herman Munster. <laughs> As you can see, they got a you know they're kind Ooh, of elevator wow. shoes, and they just okay. kind of hold everything tight. Um, and you know they're very stiff and unforgiving. And so when I'm walking with these, they just naturally seem to take the weight off of the weak part of my foot. And okay. so I can walk fairly normally. It's weird, though. I, I wore these for an hour yesterday walking around uh, uh-huh. doing some grocery shopping. And they made my foot hurt in a place it hadn't hurt before. 
So I'm like, oh, oh good, no. we're avoiding the real problem, but are we creating new problems? <laughs> oh, no. So, but I've got this Jeez. for the road. Okay, In good, case this is good. still going on, because it's been a, almost a month now since the original mysterious flip-flop incident. Yeah. And it's weird, because you were fine, then all of a sudden just the socks would like yes. trigger another thing. That's yeah, just, yeah, oh, yeah. That's I mean, well, it, it, that could have been a coincidence, but it's not like we did anything else. I was like... Uh, you know, it is freezing in here because, um, yeah. you know, sometimes Jen likes to turn the air conditioner on and uh, we run mm -hmm. at very different temperatures, she and I. Yeah. So, yeah. Aging <sighs> sucks. You are correct, Eclectic Camel. Definitely. But yeah. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep. I'm going to age for another 200 years at least. Same, same. You can't stop me. <laughs> Our well, generation that gets will be the first we... to uh, benefit from those life extending things and we just got to keep extending, keep extending until yep. we become immortal. That is my there plan. <laughs> oh my goodness well i hope the foot heals uh quickly i hope they find out what it is it just seems so strange yeah you know just oh, the guy so you know he was just a general practitioner he looked at the x-rays and said well you know there is a calcium outcropping there it could be a case of tendonitis with the tendon being you know kind of I mean, apparently we all have bony calcium outcroppings all over our bodies yeah. apparently yeah. and so yeah. that might be inflaming something but of course it's soft tissue so you can't see so yeah but he said, I, mostly I've been worried. There were no fractures. That was good to okay. rule that out. There was yep. no evidence of arthritis. It was very good to rule okay. that out. He actually yeah, he was saying, yeah. yeah, your spacing on your toes is perfect. Well, apparently I have perfect toes. Go figure. Okay. Um, you know, or the, the spacing between the bones and my toes. So, um, yeah. I, I forget, where is it in the heel? That, uh, it's, um, it's, it's basically in the ball right here. Got it. Okay. That, that whole huh. area. Um, yeah, and, and pretty much everything anybody you know that I've I've seen two people now, and they keep saying, "Well, you should feel that in your big toe, or you should feel this in your heel." And nobody said, "Well, well, I don't know of anything that you would feel in that part of your foot that would last huh. for a month like this. That wasn't yeah. a bone fracture or something like that, and it's not. So it's still dwelling, and so it that might affect the uh, road trip a little bit. But I know I've got the super shoes, so that should help too. And I do have backup crutches. Oh my gosh, they're just wor the worst." But, they are the worst. Yeah. And it, at least, I mean, it is the left foot, so you can still drive with your right foot. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so Actually, the fine. biggest hurdle is I do yeah. all of, you know, I've got a foot pedal for when I'm filming to switch oh. camera views, and I usually yep. run that with my left foot. So that's been uh -huh. a bit tricky. Okay. <laughs> Friends, uh, what other aches and pains are we uh, going through right now? Let us know your favorite ache or pain in chat. And we'll yes, indeed. <laughs> but, That's so hey, smooth. do we have any uh, 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 channel point things we need to redeem? We do. I was just opening the window. Right now, cool. we have two requests for Royal Ranks, one this or that, and one Trivial Pursuit. Um, why don't we do a Royal Ranks? All right, and let's do two. Okay. Our friend uh, Frank is in chat. He makes this comment. Every day I wake up now, I ask myself, is this a problem or just old age? It's a strange thing to say. At least. Yeah, I, I do that more frequently uh, every day. Is this <laughs> something I need to go to the doctor for or is this just being old? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, that's where I was. I, you know, and I eventually yeah. broke down. This is going to get... It is getting... Oh, it just got worse. All right. This There's clearly... <laughs> it's yeah. not as simple as I had thought or had hoped. Totally. Okay. Um, Ruckus says, oh, okay, Ruckus, I will check my uh, messages. Thank you, friend. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. You know, like when we're in Vegas, that, that's like when we met up, you know, I was thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to be fine. Um, you know, when my foot started hurting. And yeah. I was like, nope, uh, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I brought the crutches. I know it's, I know this feeling. It's not a good thing. And sure enough, yeah. I hey, hold on a second. Before we get to the real, ga the, the Gaviola Library. So you have flown with crutches, right? Uh, flown. Oh no, I haven't flown because when we went to Vegas, we. I drove. Oh, you drove. I drove. Yeah. Because yeah. that that I reminded me. I meant to ask you: Is there any special thing I have to worry about if I try to fly with crutches? Because I've never done it. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I've seen people do it. Um, but yeah. I haven't done it personally. Presumably, um, it's just an allowed extra carry-on. You would think right, it doesn't. Right. It, oh, I can't. Sorry, sir. You have to leave your backpack behind so you can do your crutches. I assume they don't do that. Yeah. I. I remember seeing one person, I think it was uh, a couple of years ago, a gentleman had crutches, and of course they gave him like the seat that has the extra uh, leg room or whatever in the yeah. uh, start of the aisle, but he did have crutches and they just put them on the side of the uh, the plane there, so um, I don't know, I didn't ask, you know, I didn't know what he had to pay or anything like that, but it, it was there, so it was allowed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, soften your razor. Thank you very much for resubscribing, and thank you for the healing rainbow of love that you sent. Oh, uh, <laughs> nice. rare Norb, Also, thank you uh, for subscribing. And uh, right, okay, yes, okay. Oh, and Duck of Death. Hey, thanks everybody. Uh, and 
Oh, branchlings! My gosh, we've just been so wrapped up in ourselves, Ruel. We only had oh. eyes for each other. Uh, yeah. Quest, or no, and then Quest Star from uh, last week. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so back to the Gaviola Library, which makes me think of another question I always mean to ask Ruel. Maybe I have asked in the past and you've told me and I forgot. Uh huh. Uh, Gaviola is not a particularly Philippines adjacent last name, is it? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a common last name of the Philippines, but there are, you know, Gabiolas um, throughout the Philippines. Really? Again, so it is kind of a Filipino last yeah, name. Yeah, it's sort of a Filipino name, and I, I always, you know, you know, the Philippines was colonized for many, many centuries by Spain. Oh, so well, of course. there's a lot of Spanish of influence there, yeah. So yes. I'm assuming somewhere along the lines of my, I haven't researched it, obviously, but somewhere along the family tree, there's had to be some kind of Spaniard or whatever, you know, and that that I can see for sure. So you've got some of that fiery Latin passion that coursing fiery, through your yeah. veins. Yeah, maybe that's why I love I love Lucy so much. I, there I don't you know. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I offend anyone, folks. I that's just the thing that came off the top of my head. My bad. Um, but <laughs> well, as we Anyways. discussed, I think last week, I love Lucy is an incredibly important and progressive, forward-thinking it, it, show, bringing was it it a Cuban uh, male lead who wasn't played for laughs. That was a huge deal. Yeah, and it was, uh, it did a lot, you know, that was one of our top three uh, comedy influential shows of all time, right? Yes, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I Love Lucy, um, I forgot already. I forgot already, yeah, but clearly I guess it didn't yeah. stand the test of time if we've both forgotten, but <laughs> ever since that conversation, I just always ask myself, what would Lucy do? That's, that's, uh, that's my nice. mantra. That, that, that is a good mantra to live by, actually. <laughs> all right, so, which of these do you want to rank? Oh, okay. Do you see Let any you like? Um... Ooh, Tapple, Bird Cycle, Prehistories. I think we had Prehistories on the last I think people keep uh, passing that one by, sadly. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Nasi, a kind of... Uh, we're going to save that because I'm going to play through it of course. Uh, in about, uh, about an hour and a half here. Folks, clear your schedules. After the R&R &R is done, it's going to continue with the RTR, Rado then Ruel, because at, uh, we're going to raid Ruel at the end of this, and you're going to be doing a live playthrough of Nasi, yeah. Coyote, and uh, Crow dice game live on Backer Kit right now. Not sure why backer kit, but um, I'm, I'm sure they have the reason. That's how they roll. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yes, literally. Yeah, um, right. Right. Any of okay, these? Okay. Um, let's see. I thought, man, I, some of these. Oh, have I you, feel like you been have you got Teletum? I, I have it. I haven't played it yet, though. Oh, it just came in the mail the other oh you're day. driving I, people nuts, for. Or, yeah, have you played it? Right. I've played it. I just filmed it yesterday. My video will be going up next week, along nice. with your uh, and Rochelle's run through of uh, of a uh, Splendor Duel. Yes. Which oh, I'm very yes. much looking Spoiler, forward to watching. I love it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we've Let's, been through uh, a lot of Kickstarters for the last couple of weeks, and so I think we're pat through the other side, and we'll get back to more, like, retail games. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, I have thoughts on Catan Jr., actually. Throw that on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have right. thoughts. Um. Let's see. What should Ruel rank? Catan Jr. Ruel yeah. has thoughts... Oh, I can't fill put all that in. It's very short text string. Okay. Good what else do you like? JR. Um, let's see. Oh, word domination. Yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, I love my always word games. love talking about word games. Yep. Okay. Uh, did we do we haven't done okay, founders of Tales of I'm assuming it wouldn't be here because it would be yeah. it would be ranked. Because you generally yeah, I ranked, ranked right ranked after it. we're done. And I, I know I know what I'm ranking it too. It's in my head. So put that on there, please. All right. You're picking two. Are the audience is picking two of these. So what else you want? Oh, they're picking two. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Um, Still haven't played Voices in my head. And I have not. Me no. either. It's driving me nuts. I oh. really want to play it. Wow. Uh, Dark Haven. Ooh, thank you for the sub. Thank you, Dark Haven. Let's go with Adventures of Robin Hood. That was a good one. Ooh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. And then let's go up a little more. I haven't played that one yet. Ooh, I need to play that one. Uh, you know, Mining Colony. I'm always happy Mining to talk Colony about from Steve Finn um, Dr. Yeah. Steve Finn. Yeah. Uh oh. Hey, isn't he actually a doctor? No, uh, he, he does have a doctor, but you know, he's not a medical doctor. I forget. He's a doctor of finance or a doctor of accounting oh, okay. or philosophy or, or something. I, I okay. seem to recall looking that up at one point. Okay, so we've got five for you to choose from, folks. You are going to choose two. You've got two minutes to vote on all of this stuff. And I believe, did I just hear a hype train? I believe we so. Just went yeah, Stop and Raisin just said we are. Uh, wow. Well, thank you, everybody, um, for, oh, the fours and Dark Haven, uh, you know, and uh, Stop and Razor for pushing us over the limit. Now, I'm sad to say, I had to retire the hype train. 
the little train oh, that comes in along the bottom. Because oh. I noticed, I don't know why I didn't see this before. You know how as more people did it and they, they took a little seat on the train? Yep. One of them was a Pepe the Frog face. Oh, no, like, really? Oh, my gosh, why is that there? No! What the? No! Oh. I mean, wow. don't get me wrong. I have nothing but sympathy for that poor cartoonist yeah. you know, who tried so hard to take it back from the alt-right. <laughs> And I think yeah. he, I think there's even a, a mini documentary about that somewhere about how he's like, no, I'm trying to reclaim. This is mine. You stole it from me. Uh, you, I, he, Pepe does not represent you. But nope, yeah, Pepe is ours yes. now. A random such cartoonist. A um, so when I saw Pepe showing up in our hype trains, like, no, that's not right. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, yeah, yeah. You did the right thing. What, what a bummer. Yes. Um, oh, Goblin's asking, what, what's this Pepe the Frog? Oh. Oh, uh, um, the fours at the top of the chat. Uh, there should be a current poll um, at, at the top of your chat window, and you should be able to hit a down arrow and get a list of what you want to vote on. Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody wants to hear you talk about word games, Ruel, at all. Yeah, man. Join me on Words on Wednesdays, folks. Every other Wednesday, I play word games if you want to uh, watch <laughs> me do crossword puzzles and stuff. For whoever voted for that. Is there at least one vote? I know someone voted. It wasn't me that voted for that. Oh, boy. Um, oh. Ruckus says, speaking of Junior Edition, they have a new Ticket to Ride Junior Edition that's going to be a spooky theme. Oh, cool. Yes. I'm always happy to hear yes. that. Yes. I, I saw that preparing for the top 10 today. And oh. um, it is, unfortunate. yeah, it is a junior version. It's not the one that apparently is coming out at Essen that turns Ticket to Ride into a, or no, yeah, Ticket to Ride into a co-op game. No, no, not Ticket to Ride. Which one was it? We were talking about well, this Ticket to, What? There was something. There was a ticket. Was, it, uh, was okay. it Ticket to Ride? It was a ghost house? I can't remember it now. But it was basically turning an old beloved classic. I think it was turning Ticket to Ride into a cooperative game. Whoa, really? I but I, no I might be idea. remembering it wrong now. Uh, everything's uh, getting confused yeah. in my head. But regardless, yeah. Adventures of Robin Hood is the clear winner with by one vote. Um, 78 to 77, Founders of Teotihuacan and Steve Finn's Mining Colony will have to mine another day. All righty, so let's okay. go on ahead and find those again. Hey, there's Robin Hood. And what was the other one? We just said Teotihuacan, right? Teotihuacan. Okay. okay. So, Ruel, tell us. tell us, Paint a picture of the adventures of Robin Hood. The adventures of Robin Hood. So, you are taking on the role of the classic uh, figure, Robin Hood. And all of the characters in that universe uh, made Marion and um, uh, Little John and so forth. And you're you're literally going on the adventure. You're going to explore Shorewood Forest in a forest. And uh, oh yeah, you you have a, a run through video there for those of you who are watching. This the board is so unique. I've not seen this in I, I maybe you know, but I haven't seen this in any other game where it's literally almost like an advent calendar. You're opening up these little things, uh, little doors into yes, it. Yes, that's exactly what it is. The entire board right. is one big advent calendar. Yeah, and it's neat. And the movement thing is really interesting. You have a multiple figures of your character, and you're going to line those up to move across this forest. And, of course, there are some limitations as far as, you know, you can't just go through, uh, like, a tree or, or a yeah. rock or whatever. You have to go around it, and so you have a certain number of movement points to go around. And once you hit these things, you you open up the little advent calendar-style thing, and it's <laughs> going to direct you to find uh, something in the book. And i got to talk about the components of the book of this thing is fantastic. I mean, it's a beautiful... Uh, almost like a, uh, uh, something you put on your shelf. Like, there it is. Perfect timing in the <laughs> video. It is gorgeous. And it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. You're going to have choices to um, make uh, in the narrative, and it's really well-crafted. And then you also have the, um, I believe it's action disc, right? You're pulling them from the uh, the yes. bag randomly. Mm -hmm. And that's going to determine uh, a turn order, almost like initiative. And so you're trying to complete your goal, and you've got certain actions. And as the game progresses, this is what I really like about it, Richard, you're going to add more things to it. And it's going to expand in, in its depth and its uh, narrative. Um, it starts off, it's really easy to learn. Michelle and I went through, the, I think, the first couple of uh, adventures or whatever. But it really does ramp up a little bit um, yeah. as you go on and you reset things. And you have to, you know, you have a certain time to do these uh, adventures, your missions. Boy, oh boy. If you have any interest in the theme at all, this is such a fantastic theme. And the way they implement it, I thought was brilliant. Um, and I, I definitely recommend it. It's a really cool narrative adventure, and that's why I really enjoy it, the Adventures of Robin Hood. So what? Um, what? Give it a number. I'm giving it's not it a, ranked a really until you number it. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I mean, it's. Am I going in an eight or am I? I. It's. I think it's slightly under an eight for me. I'm gonna say seven point nine six. Yeah, seven point nine six. Yep, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, I. Okay. I 
We played it. I forget. I think it comes with like five or six missions in the base box. Yep. Um, yep. This is very rare for us. We played them all. Um, oh wow! Yeah, nice. and, and and it it it, 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 it Every mission just comes up with new and cool, interesting things uh, that surprise you. You might say, oh, well, then how can anybody watch my run-through? Because it'll be one of the few missions that come with the game that are spoiled. Actually, to do this run-through, what I did is there were extra German missions that were only available in German that you could download from the German <gasps> publisher's website. So I downloaded one of those and did my <laughs> best to try to translate it. Um, so wow. uh, if you watch my run-through, you're not spoiling anything that comes in the retail box, just a German side mission you can download to get oh, an idea of how cool. the game plays um yeah you know it's interesting that, that i love i never thought about it, so just a second like i said a lot of movement games have action points hey i can i can spend three movement points this turn and in this game that's what it does but your movement points are represented by those cool little um pieces that you very yeah. organically try to get around stuff and um, yeah, this is from the same designer as Legends of Andor. Every mission comes up with new, interesting things within the you know the confines of the of the really simple. This is a very family friendly game. This is definitely one for parents to play with their kids. But Jen and I, we enjoyed it very much from start to finish. A great, great little game. Yeah, um, and, and I, I think just, it's... I just realized Michael Menzel, as you mentioned, Legends of Andor. I mean, he's a great designer yes, and he artist. Is. He did the art, and I'm like, wow, I forget that he's an artist. You know, so. Very, very cool game. Super thematic. And uh, yeah, Michelle and I, we had a good yeah. time with this one. I know some people worry about, well, isn't the game going to break down if you're constantly flipping all these tiles over and over again, like you're seeing me do in this video? Um, mm -hmm. If you're, It was not a problem for us, because Jen just used her nails, and her nails yeah. could just get right underneath and not... Bu but um, when I was doing it, we just had a butter knife, so we weren't worried about, like, you know... Plus, the reality is, once you flip them, don't put them snugly back in. Because chances are, if you flipped it once, you're probably going to flip it a few more times. So, yeah. you know, don't snugly put them back in until you're ready to put the game away. Great, right, great thing. Right. But that's yeah. our first Ruel rank. Afterwards, yeah. we got to talk about the founders of Teotihuacan, uh, which people also want to hear you talk about. Yeah, and this one, wow. Um, so this is, a, I just realized, this is a 2022 release. This is one of my favorite games of this year. Um, I, For whatever reason, I don't feel like it's getting as much love as I feel like it should be. It, yeah. I mean, is, to me, it reminds me of um, this line at Board and Dice where they, you know, they're known for heavier games, right? Sure. But they're doing these games as well, Founders of State of Khan and also Zapotec, where they're giving this really meaty experience, but it's in 45 minutes. I mean, I love that. Give me something like that where I can have almost like a brain burning session in less than an hour. I really enjoy that. And this is one of this, the tile laying game at its heart. Uh, this is before Teotihuacan has been you know, created. You are helping build the pyramid and everything else by um, using resources. It's a worker placement game and it has this really neat uh, worker placement um, uh, action mm. where you. I think it's the strength of uh, each worker can be different. Is that right? It's been, it's been a couple of months since I played it. Um, but. As you go along, you're gathering resources to build other parts of the pyramid, and it does this the cool thing where you can only build where your architect is, and that Correct. architect goes around your player board, right so now. it's only like where whatever side it's looking on. So yep. you do have sort of you have to plan that out, and it's a really neat puzzle. And again, it's one of those things I always feel like like Zapotec. It's after I played it, it was like, oh, we've been playing for like an hour and a half. No, we've been playing for forty five minutes. I, I love that feeling. You mean that in a good way, what, not in a oh god, in, in me the now, best way like, possible. Oh my god, yeah, this feels like it was such a big experience, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. In the best way possible. That's what I mean. Yeah. So it feels like a much bigger experience in 45 minutes. And I love that because it helps me get more games at the table because more games is a good thing, folks. Um, so, I mean, I love everything about this. And I'm going to go high on this one. I'm going at 8.12. I absolutely enjoy this game. Uh, so there it is. 8.12 for Founders of Tale of Table. I agree. Uh, this is currently in my running for top 10 of the year. There's still a lot oh, of games yeah. to play, of yeah. course, but I think this has a good shot of making it in my top 10. You mentioned the worker placement, and you're right. It is a, does a very cool thing where um, you grab a spot, and hey, maybe you get a bonus if you're the first person there. Other mm -hmm. people can still go to that spot and stack on top of you. And so you yes. want to be the first to go to a space because you want to get that bonus, but you want to wait for other people to go to the space because if you put your worker on top of mine, you get a double strength action. And oh, then right. if, yes. um, if if somebody does a third worker onto that space, they get to do a triple strength action because yes. you know the workers build on top of each other. So it has a really cool, fresh, interesting uh, worker placement mechanism, quite unlike anything I've ever seen before. And it's got really great uh, polyomino tile laying. And the thing I love about the tile laying is you have this really 
really... Oh, now I'm showing the workers. Let me go back to where the tiles are. You have this really tough thing. When you put a tile down, you surround it with all the resources you need to build other tiles. So you want to you want to put tiles all squished together, right? That's a polyomino yeah. game. Get as much as you can in t- a tight space. But not in this game. You need to leave space so that your buildings can kind of breathe and give you all the resources you need. But then that means you have yeah. less space to actually build stuff. This game <laughs> is crackerjack. It is so good. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I mean, I, it's seriously just talking about right now. Like I, I, I want to solo. I have not soloed it. Yet. It's have a great solo, solo game, which oh, is what I, that's what I figured. Yeah. 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 Uh, wait, maybe I have done it solo. Now I'm thinking maybe I did. Oh, anyways, it, it's really good. I'm watching the video here as we're talking about this and that, that really, I don't know. I love that uh, thing you mentioned, how you place pieces down as surrounded with resources, but usually in these polyominoes, you're trying to fill them up. And I yep. love how they flip that on its head. And, um, the designer Philippe Glowwatch. Um, for some reason, this take take on worker placements uh, genre it reminds me of something like Shem Phillips would do, sort of like flip it on its head, like mm. something a new worker placement style. So yeah. I really, really enjoy it. That's why, yeah, we're going with eight point one two uh, for this game. An excellent choice for an excellent Thank game. You. Founders yes. of Teotihuacan cannot recommend it highly enough. Agreed. Yes. All hey. right. Well, folks, we have now done two Ruel ranks, but you have requested other stuff. Let me bring that winder back up. The windy winder. All right. Um, but where'd it go? Oh, it's in the background. There it is. Okay. Ruel. Oh, and no, we just got a third Ruel ranks request. Oh, I'm sorry, Eclectic Camel. You were too slow. <laughs> too slow. Um, but We'll get you next time, my friend. Okay. We have not gotten the trivia wheel out in quite a while, and Fidelia mm. requested some personal trivia. Uh, okay. So let me go on ahead. Man, I've been so long, I don't hardly remember how to do it. All right. So we, I come over here. Apparently, they haven't had enough trivia regarding like RVs oh, I know, or I know. problems. Or... <laughs> yeah, this is like bonus trivia. Oh, and, oh, and I think okay. it's going to be some Ruel trivia because it looks oh, like man. um we have uh, to be ready here yep 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 i, I i'm thinking okay. we're gonna be hearing some personal stuff and it can't be about the origin of your name because we already covered that darn um, it okay <laughs> let's see here uh spin and it's covered your face and okay. i don't remember if i can move this around eh, it won't spin laugh very long. if it lands on your name there you go there you go there you go yep yep, yep, oh, yep. So close. all right so okay. that's it. And now the next time you see this wheel, folks, it will have been reset. Or no, should I leave it at so 50-50? Yeah, there'll be one more 50-50 chance 50/50. of, of yeah. who you will find out about. But today, Ruel, we need to know deep, dark, personal secrets about your uh, uh, the, the trivia and minutia of your life. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about your early uh, job, your early career and, yes, as we've a hit that uh, many vacuum times. salesman. Hey, Rado, you know what my first like real job was? Uh, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume gas station attendant. Oh, uh, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I had many jobs uh, as a teen, you know, doing like, you know, uh, mowing lawns, the, the, the standard yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but my real like jobby job was... Um, you mean where you had pro- to sign a W-2. They needed yep. a had social s- security yep. number from you. Okay. Had a timesheet and everything. Yep. Yeah. This was back in the day when you actually had filled out a timesheet. Yep. Uh, I, w- I process payroll for the city of Los Angeles. What? <laughs> right? What? What is that? You know, uh, my father worked for the city of LA for many, 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 many years. Um, he was an accountant. And um, as an interesting fact, many uh, Filipinos from his generation um, were either accountants, men were accountants, and uh, women were nurses. Oh, around wow. the 60s, 70s, it's just uh, it's this phenomenon called the brain drain. A lot of them moved away from the Philippines to go to the U.S. for better opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. So he ended up in the city of L.A. as an accountant for many years. And when I was ready to get out in, in the world and work a real job, he helped me uh, find a, a job as a processing payroll in the summer uh, program. It was like a youth program. Okay, uh, so for, this was not for... blatant uh, nepotism going on. Exactly, here. yeah. And he was always afraid of this. Like, don't tell anyone. I mean, the statute of limitations has been long past. But um, <laughs> he's like, don't tell anyone. I don't want to get accused of nepotism. I'm like, pops. It's like you were on like we're in the same building, but it's like different floors and different programs. Yeah. But it's one of those things. He knew a guy. It's like, hey, you know, maybe you can, you know, look at my son's application. Uh, but it was a fun job. Um, was it? It, it was interesting. It, it was fun because here's the thing. Being in downtown L.A., I mean, I was born and raised in the suburbs of L.A. Okay. Going from that to downtown L.A. every day was like an eye-opener. Oh. Like, uh, I'm, here's, here's a fun fact. Hey, Richard, do you know where I saw my first crack deal? <laughs> I'm going to say in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, literally. The first day on the job, 
Uh, my dad and I, we actually took the bus together for my first day because he wanted to show me the ropes. We got out of the bus. We were walking to the, uh, to the office. And sure enough, the two gentlemen in front of us, boom, did the exchange. I was like, I just saw a crack deal. Wow, that's insane. Did your dad so, notice? Did you say, Dad, did you see that? Or yeah, did you I say, just, keep on I, walking, son? I think we both just sort of like saw it and just kept it for ourselves. And maybe I should ask him uh, now. I said, you know, do you remember that day so many years ago where we saw the crack deal? But uh, anyways, the, the job was fun because... Downtown LA, it's got some of the best food in Southern California. So uh -huh. I would say, I like, first time I ever tried Peruvian food. First time I ever tried Salvadorian food. Oh, wow. First time, you know, just all kinds of great stuff. And I, you know, I guess the job was okay. It was, you know, number crunching and stuff. But uh, just the culture around it was really, really fun. Um, so, yeah, that's my first job, uh, processing payroll for the city of LA. That's some good trivia. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. I do not. I mean, oh. my first actual W-2 job was just being a fry cook at a local fast food place. Okay, oh, bonus. Okay. No, no, no. Next time trivia. I actually, I now that I think say. about it, I do have some stuff to say about working for Crazy Eric's uh, um, as my oh. first actual real <laughs> that, salary that alone, job. The name alone, I, I need to hear this. Yes, story. Yeah, yes. save it for next time. For it, sure. it did crazy go a little Eric. crazy, actually, now that I think about it. I told, I've forgotten about that. For, I haven't thought about that for years. Jeez wow. Louise. So yes, next time there's Save a trivia that. request, well, there's a 50-50 yeah. chance, folks, that you'll get to hear about my first job to follow on. Nowhere near as glamorous as uh, Ruel's, I should say, right now, <laughs> just as a fair warning. That okay. Okay, cool. Let's see here. Um, oh, and then, hey, I think we've got time for maybe 10 minutes of this or that. Oh, yeah. Our Always favorite a, thing in the uh, world. Uh, okay. This or that. I love these. Yep. Explain okay. it to the people. Okay, folks. So this or that, we are. Um, you have all requested this. And what you're going to do is just throw out um, two things in chat, and we will pick this or that. Peanut butter or jelly. Fries summer or winter. Or, summer or winter, you know. No, do uh, it. Processing. Tell me. Summer or winter. Summer or winter? Okay, yeah. Summer or winter, Richard? Um, oh, summer. I actually, I, I really like both a lot. I like the wow, two extremes. Really? But if I had okay. to choose one, I love, I love baking. I love, I think we've talked about this before. I love getting into a ridiculously overheated car, shutting the door and not turning on the AC or rolling down the window, but just letting it seep into my bones. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I thought for sure you're a winter person. For sure, I love I, I love winter too. Although, but for yeah. most of my life, winter just means gray, endless rain. And yeah. Uh, okay, if we yeah. could talk about you know um, northeast, yeah. you know, beautiful snowy winter, but that's something I've had very few times in my life. Mm, yeah, I, I'm definitely a summer person. Uh, give me some. Really? Person. Okay. Uh, yeah, Southern California. You know that. Oh, that's of just, course, I'm, I'm of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Course. Okay, here we go. Uh, Timmy Baloo, dogs or cats? I am. I love them both, but I am a dog person. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I have nothing against cats. I've had some very nice cats in my life. Uh, I still have a very fond us for a little bobtail calico named Sesame. Uh, oh, but yeah, it's it's dogs all the way. Yeah. Oh, I have. I had a, oh, the one cat I've owned um, had a great name, and I'm going to save that for a trivia as well. So okay. folks, <laughs> we'll save that. <laughs> okay. Here's one. Ooh. German or Italian game designers? Huh. That's a really interesting one. Yeah. You know, uh, my gut is to say Italian. That 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 Same. group um, of I, I think they all know each other. I think they all play with each other, and they you know mm. they all kind of cross pollinate into each other's games. I don't know that the group actually has a name, but it should. Um, you know, forget mm. about Prospo Hall. I'll talk about that. You know, that, that, <laughs> that group with Luciani and um, and Nestore and all the rest of them. Yep. Uh, yeah, just based on that, I mean, because really, when you think about Italian designers, you're mostly thinking about them. Um, yeah, the, you know, the dice designers. I love dice and the yeah. way they work with dice. But then German, you're <laughs> Stefan Feld, right? No. Oh. That's, come on now. <laughs> and is Ryan Knizzi a German? Knizzi, oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. Is and he or is he Aus I have no idea, it never occurred I to me. I believe he's, oh, is he Austrian? He certainly German? has a he very might... thick German E, German-esque yeah. accent. So, yeah. wow, my favorite designer of all time is German. And Fister. Same. I don't know. That certainly sounds like a German name, Alexander Fister. Yeah. Although I have well, no idea what his nationality to, is. According to the internet, Reiner Knizia was born in Germany. There you go. Wow. So, oh, man. I wow. Have to change we're terrible at this or well. that. We're just supposed to get, say it and then go on to the next thing, but we're digging yeah. down. So it's Knizia and Feld versus that Italian <sighs> super team. Ugh. If one of them, all of their works were stricken from existence, and um, and you could never yeah. see them again. No, okay, I'll have to go German. 
Uh, I, sorry, Boyd, just, just a Marco Polo. Sorry, Zolk in the Mayan calendar. Yeah. Sorry, Grand Austria yeah. Hotel. I, 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 I must have my Feld. And you know what? I can't live in a world without Italian. So I'm going to say Italian. So we can what? sort of cheat on this. Whoa! One. You say German, Canadian I say Italian. One. Okay. We've, we've, okay. I know. It's, it kills me, but it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. This is that, folks. We're, we're going to be a lot quicker now. Uh, yes. <laughs> paper money or coins? Uh, I'll be contrary and say paper money. I actually like paper money. Me and okay. Friedman Freeze were the only ones who like it because <laughs> we all grew up playing Monopoly, right? It's just, it's yep. not, I mean, money comes in paper form. Now, I'm talking good paper money. I'm not talking about really cheap, crappy knockoff, you know, Monopoly okay. money that's practically one step removed from tissue paper, but like a nice <laughs> linen, I haven't seen it done in very many games, but I have seen some games that have like a nice linen finish paper money, and it's really cool. And honestly, yeah. I, I know most people love the coins. They love the head. Every, every time anybody's ooing and on, I'm like, do you pull quarters out of your pocket and ooh and all over that as well? I don't get it. I just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I like um, the, I sort of like the car. I mean, I, I'm more of a coins guy. I just like fiddling with them when we're sure. playing. But the um, the paper money, and it's more of like a little card stock or whatever. I don't know, like laminated almost. But that game Stockpile, they have mm, money. That's one of I the like ones the, I'm thinking of. Yes. I, I like that I think money. that's right. I, I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. Stockpile. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, speed or fuel economy? Fuel, me, economy. fuel economy. Um, yeah. I, although yeah. I mean, we did not we did not buy for that. Uh, I, I think we can expect to average eight miles a gallon with this Ooh, with wow. this big bad boy we're getting. Um, but yeah, you know, that's wow. I mean, I what I was mostly doing. I mean, because we were like, there's there's thousands. How can we ever choose? And I was doing a lot of searches for you know best class A RV mileage, and apparently the best you can hope for, and really extreme perfect circumstances is maybe thirteen or fourteen. So wow. you know wow. that that yeah. is the nature of it. But hey, Jen and I don't have kids, so we always give ourselves an out for anything we want to do that's less than you know perfectly ideal for the, for yeah. the planet. Is well, we didn't have kids, so there you, know, you go. You know. <laughs> yeah, um, playing on Mars in Carcassonne or playing Carcassonne on Mars. <laughs> Ruckus, that's clever. I like that. I um, want to play Carcassonne on Mars. Uh, I, I, that's what I want to do, but yeah. I would rather go the other way. No, of course, yes. Well, but no, but will you die? Yeah, I guess that's one thing. I don't know. We, we get way too deep on these this or that. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah. We'll get, uh, here's the opportunity one to go you. to Mars, yes, I would take that as well, provided I can make Same. it back home. With that caveat, I would also make... Oh, by the way, somebody said, we were talking earlier, it was an upcoming cooperative Carcassonne that's coming out very soon. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Essen or Gen Con? I have not been to Essen yet, so I cannot answer this. But I, I do say, enjoy Gen Con. I will say Essen just because there's more games I love there. I would, nice. I, you, I think you would argue that Gen Con is the better one to go to. I mean, both of them are in kind of crappy cities. There's where there's very yeah. little to do. Indianapolis yeah. and um, you know, and Essen. No offense to either of them, but they are not great uh, tourist uh, trap spots. But mm. yeah, more games I want to play at Essen. Yeah. Now, having said that, this last time at Gen Con, I did uh, something very oh. cool. Uh, I saw a baseball game right across oh, the right. street yes, from the convention center. So that they do have uh, they do have baseball, a minor league team. So that was fun. Um, Andor or Mandalorian? I'm going to tell you this right now. As much as I love Star Wars, I have only started Andor. I've not finished the three episodes they released yet. So I am behind the times. Uh, Mandalorian to me is the pinnacle of uh, Disney Plus Star Wars TV at this point. But have you watched Andor? Richard. I would like to yeah. opt neither. Neither. Oh, okay. Um, you know, um, Mandalorian was a thing I mostly watched because my mom loved it so much. My mom's no longer with us, and mm. um, I and you know, I started watching the first episode of Andor, and I got 15 minutes in, and I was like, "Well, I don't care about any of this," and oh, I don't have to watch this. I do not have to tick the box of, oh, make sure you uh, have your finger on the fall. I'm like, nope, I just don't care. Now, as I understand it from what I've read, it's probably, of all the Star Wars shows, the one I would enjoy the most because it's very yeah. slow and thoughtful. Some people say mm -hmm. it's ponderous and boring, but I bet you I would. I mean, they say that about the first season of Breaking Bad, too, or Better Call Saul. Okay. I mean, I want really? Better Call Saul in space. That's interesting to me. But still, wow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm just sticking yeah. to I, my Disney Plus subscription is for Marvel shows, and that's it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, baked or mashed potato? Huh. Ooh. Why is this harder than I thought it would be? Yes! <laughs> well, I mean, a baked potato is pretty much a mashed potato just still in the shell, effectively. 
But, yeah, it, it, you put more stuff on a baked potato. But I, I just love mashed potatoes. I know? do too. I understand. And it's not like anything you would put on a baked potato. You can put in a mashed potato. Yeah. So I'm going to go oh. mashed. So am I. I, I that's, yeah. that's my, Convenience that was my factor. gut feeling. But yeah, it made me think about it. Thank yep. you. Um, I've not seen either of these movies. Uh, Matrix 4 or Bill, Bill and Ted 3. Ooh, that's a good choice. There are... Th- what the... What is wrong with you? And you still haven't seen everything everywhere all at once either? I, I'm so far behind the time. Have you canceled all of your streaming subscriptions? <laughs> I, I I swear. I'm just letting money... I'm just burning oh, money. Oh, you're burning apparently. all of them and watching none of them. Um, <laughs> I, I guess Bill and Ted. I like The Matrix more than most people. The Matrix, I, the Matrix 4... It really only suffered from basically COVID filming syndrome. It's such okay. a huge drop down in the quality of the action. Um, you know, it's it's almost like it's almost you know nineteen nineties TV show action. It's almost Hardcastle and McCormick level action. Wow. Okay. okay. Deep cut for uh, Kabuki and probably nobody else. Yeah. Maybe not even you. <laughs> remember Hardcastle and McCormick? Uh, I remember. I do. Yeah. Not. Uh... <laughs> um. This was interesting. So, Bing, I actually played uh, hardback with Bing the other day on Board Game <laughs> Arena. Uh, they're asking hardback or paperback the games. I, after getting crushed by Bing and hardback, I am definitely a fan of paperback. But I've always enjoyed paperback more. It is more of a word game, whereas hardback's more of a deck building game. It, that is exactly right. Um, and interestingly, I would still go with paperback more uh, for one reason. When I played hardback in prototype form, he had not finished his co-op game mode. Oh, okay. I know it has one, and maybe it's fantastic, yeah. but the co-op for paperback is so freaking good. Yeah, agreed. Um, Goblin just has a comment. Mandalorian was better than Obi Wan. You're nuts, you well. I will. Well, okay, hey, say... Mandalorian versus Obi Wan or versus Obi Wan. Oh, Mandalorian. Come oh, Obi Wan. I... Seven ways to really? Sunday. Obi Wan is so far and away superior. They are both no. flawed shows, but neither of them agree. are great shows. But yeah. Obi Wan, um, you know, just putting of uh, you know, Ewan McGregor on TV for six hours was worth yeah. showing up for. Um, I, I would have loved that show. I mean, you know, if it was just some random sci-fi thing and you know, anything with Ewan McGregor on TV was absolutely great, but I felt it did a lot more interesting stuff. You know, my feelings about Mandalorian though. So yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, I'm not saying Obi-Wan was a bad show. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it actually more than I thought I would. And the, the, like the final, showdown between him and vader was really way more emotional than i thought yes like i i was literally choking back tears uh you know when they had their last interaction i love that um but yes on, uh, it's, it's it starts just, incredibly uh, strong and i think it ended incredibly strong i the, okay i actually thought it started a little weak oh my god the very first better. thing you see in obi-wan so this is not really spoilers is okay. flashback to um, order, what was it? Order 86, order 33, order whatever it is. It, it flashback yeah. to um, what happened at the Jedi Temple. And that was yeah. probably the most emotionally impactful um, laser sword fighting I've ever seen in my life. The sheer desperation <laughs> the of that sword. nameless Jedi trying to save those children. Star yeah. Wars has never been that good, has never been that emotionally powerful to me. The way she fought was so desperate, was incredible. Yeah. And then, you know, the big surprise, you know, the, the baby equivalent Yoda surprise, just put a smile yeah. on my face. I And we will just ignore the um, frolicking in the woods. We'll just forget about I, that whole, okay, hey, you. let's play let's play uh, hide and seek with the red hot chili peppers. Right. We can just forget, pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was one thing I did not expect. I got to shout out Flea. I, I was, the last <laughs> time I saw Flea on the big screen was back in Point Break, folks. So there you that's go. That's been a long yep. time. So. Mandalorian gives you no Flea. Gives you no chili peppers of any sort. No yeah, Anthony, you know, if, no nothing. No Anthony, yeah. So next time, if you're watching um, Lucasfilm and Disney+, Plus, we need more chili peppers. Yes, clearly. Okay, final couple of things here okay. real quick. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Hmm. Oh, man. I got to go with my favorite scoundrel in the galaxy, Han Solo. Yeah, I think I would go with Han Solo as well. I mean, I've always liked okay. Indiana Jones. I mean... Same. Same. I, 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 I've always appreciated all the movies, but... Uh, yeah, I don't. Th- I just don't think it's quite as formative. Um, I don't think there is as much interesting to do with him as a character. He didn't really have yeah. anywhere to go. I mean, he is the example of you know when people say, "Oh, movies have to have an arc." Really? Did 
did the lawyers lock some Marx movies? They didn't. Oh, but no, right. he, he learned that maybe there's superstition is maybe a little bit real. That's it. You know, he didn't yeah. go on any kind of emotional journey of growth and character development. It was just Agreed. a great fun film. Same for yeah. Marty McFly. He doesn't change as a person. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, at least in the original movie, I know they tried to bolt on a character's journey for him in two and three, which was just yeah. so like, okay, they clearly were like, Oh crap. The book says we have to give him an emotional arc. We would turns out, I guess we'll try to do it anyway. Anyway, sorry. That's like a whole different rant about um, what you have to do to have a good movie. Otherwise, it's a bad movie. Yeah. yeah. What else? Last few ones here. Okay. Uh, Amster, Dice, or Lisa. Morning person or night person? What's morning? If you're talking about after 8 a.m., uh, I'm both. But yeah. um, Oh, man. I tend to be more of a night person, but I like to think I'm a morning person because... <laughs> Depending on what it is, I can be up early and do like if I'm going to go on a fishing trip, I'll be up at 5 a.m. No problem. Yeah. Or if I'm going to do something that I'm excited about, I have no problem. But well, I think I, I'm more productive work wise later at night. Later really? At the That's interesting. Yeah. I would certainly. It, it's not weird. Think that. Yeah, it's weird though. Like I, I, I don't know. You know what it is? I'm definitely not an afternoon person. It's either mm. night. Or morning for me. Either <laughs> one, I can be productive. It's the afternoon. Honestly, Raph the R&R show, usually I'm like sort of like just drained, you know. But maybe it's the show. But um, yeah, I'm not an afternoon person for sure. So you're more of a night person? Well, I mean, I, t I usually stay up till like 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, I usually wake up at 7. And yeah. I would say I'm probably, I, I, I'm certainly more frosty in the morning. You, you get better mm -hmm. work out of me. But um and I, I you know, yeah. I, when I when I was in college, I worked when I was working at Nintendo. I got up at three a.m. for like two years every day. 3 Whoa, really? Yeah, uh, when I was working at Nintendo as a gameplay counselor, I I was at the four a.m. opening shift. Uh, worked from four wow. to one uh, every day. I did that for a few years, and wow, I, I don't think it. I, I, I was able to do it without too much trouble. So yeah. I, I'd probably go with something like that. Wow. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, two wait, two final ones. Okay. Heavy metal or rap? Rap, actually. Yeah, I, I lean towards rap. I, I I'm surprised with you. I I mean, after I did my heavy metal thing, I like I really got into rap and hip hop. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the golden age of hip hop, the '90s hip hop. I'm a huge fan of. Um, but I would I'm more of a rap guy. And final one, legacy or quote unquote regular board games. Oh, given the opportunity, I'll take a legacy game any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I like regular board games. I like board games. Cha I like yeah. my consequences. I like my choices leading to real meaningful consequences that carry yeah. on almost as if I'm building a legacy. Uh, to me, that's awesome. I love it. I love that. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. So it's our, we're, we, 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 we run long. I've we spent too much time we talking have. about RVs and not enough time talking about <laughs> games, but before we continue on, we're going to give away a game Sagrada artisans to one yes. lucky winner. Let me bring up the browser. And um, let's see here. That browser, she's going to spin for somebody is going to get it. Hey, and while we're doing this, I'm going to test if I can do the uh, caption thing. Oh, fruit. We, we've totally we forgot to do, do that, that before we started. Yeah, right. So, okay. Winner, winner. Oops. Juan Falcon. Congratulations, Juan. Can you put Congrats. that down there in the bottom? Oh, you have uh, given a sneak Juan. peek of your tabletop. Oh, man. What is that? Why is this? Ah. Because you hit um, one of the keys that OBS has mapped to go to that particular camera angle. One of my hot keys apparently just there went off. Go. So you got a sneak peek of what's coming up next, folks. Let's yes. see. Did what I... was okay, it? Could you identify it um, from just seeing half of a uh, dice tray, I think, is all we saw. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me... All right, so Juan Falcone is the winner. Juan, I'll be contacting okay. you later today to get your information to get it on to the publishers. Congratulations. Sorry to all the other entrants, but if you stick around and watch the show, you'll be able to win a $50 gift certificate. If Unless the show is over, because Ruel seems to be struggling now. Yeah, now I've got a... Can you hear me? And you can still I hear can me, hear right? you. I can see you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I knocked out a cable here, and I don't know what it was. Oh, okay. no. Man. Well, oh, while okay. you're trying to make sure you're back online, folks, to win the $50 gift certificate for the top 10 we're about to do, we need a secret word. What would you suggest is a good secret word based on the conversations we just had? And I'm going to go into OBS and turn this thing off because I don't want to... Let me see. Turn me off what? Fix my, 
my uh, my hotkey here because apparently I put something here that I'm going to be asking. What did I use to pause? Or... That's not it. What did I press? This is so know. weird. You typed in okay. the word congratulations. Yeah. And maybe hit a couple of extra keys. Maybe I, I think that's that's what I did because I, that should not have triggered it. That's, that's what's freaking me out. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, That'll be very congratulations exciting while we're winner. filming the show. Yeah. All righty. So, um, and you know what? Why, uh, all right. So people are suggesting RV over and over again. And that does seem like okay. the theme of the day. Yeah, um, for sure. Let's see. Yeah, here. should we? Well, how are we going to do? Huh, can I do RV? Um, uh, I can totally do it. I can totally sure? do it. Really? Okay. Yeah, you so. sound like you. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. I you just got need a to smile make a on your face. To myself. I feel like you should do it. Yeah. Don't forget okay. on this particular entry to use the word casually RV. I, I think nice. it's going to be a little obvious, quite frankly, but that's okay. okay. That's okay. All right. All right. Cool. Urgh. Right. Okay. So, folks, I'll be saying RV. At some point in the upcoming top 10, because you watch live, you get to know. And um, now, because some of you actually subscribe and keep this show going, thank you very much, uh, we're going to have a battle to the death amongst all our favorite people. And only one, um, what is this? Looks like 30 enter one leaves win this upcoming battle royale. All right. Good luck, everybody. Let's get the free show banner off the screen. Don't want to obscure any of the carnage as I have mistakenly done in the past. <laughs> oh, we got a big turnout today. Wow. Lots of folks. Feldfan nice. is out and open with his big lovable eyes, throws down with Fidelia, and regrets it because Feldfan is now completely surrounded down to 50% health. I can't even see Feldfan. Everybody's, uh, you know, and are, Fel, are you even still with us, Feldfan? Oh my gosh, trying to make a break to escape, and you do escape, but three people are chasing you. Uh, Billy Pratt, um, oh, nope, okay, it's all over, but don't worry, Feld, Billy Pratt is going down quick. Looks like, um, yep, yep, oh. and Soften Your Razor throws down with Goblin. Oh my gosh, this is carnage! We haven't had this many combatants in quite a while. Alright, okay. Darwinots and Mantos throw down. Darwinots uh, was not surviving the, in the most fit way. Mantos then goes up again. No, runs away from Bodie Belly. Double wielding energy swords from Halo and I don't know where. And uh, makes short work. And oh, Mike Adams, run, Mike, run. The handlebar mustache will not save you. Oh my gosh, Mike gets a backstab. This is, could go anywhere. Lollipops wow. versus Halo Sword. Wow! Wow! Mike! <laughs> Mike, congratulations! Mike Adams, 55! Jeez Louise, never underestimate a avatar in a bowler hat and Andalmar's mustache wielding a lollipop. <laughs> Impressive! Wow. <laughs> Love it. That was just always so much fun. Yep, that was silly. All righty. All right. Fun. Okay. Cool. Yes, definitely. Billy Pratt, an under, an under, a, a worthy underdog victory. Um, okay, so cool. We have the word. It's RV. I have to remember to say it. I made a big note of it. Don't forget. Don't forget. And uh, yeah, anything else that we're forgetting? Um, no, I think we're good to go. We have, uh, yeah, we did the giveaway. We set up the secret word, and now we get to do the show. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, right. um, folks, listen for me to say RV. If you are a subscriber of the show, though, which you can do for free, did you know? For free, you can subscribe to the show um, with, with your Amazon Prime account. Then you get an avatar, and also you can direct message me, and I'll just tell you. I mean, I'll tell you right now if you direct message me right now if you're a subscriber. No, I won't. I'll tell you later. Uh, so you don't. You can just sit back okay. and enjoy the show. Uh, this one's sponsored by Fun Again. So we're once again doing. Um, actually, Fun Again is running a fall sale right now. And geez, Louise! Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah. I don't know about you, Ruel, but we've always had kind of a semi uh, soft rule we follow where we're, every time we do another um, Fun Again thing, we try to talk about new stuff, not stuff we've talked about. Yep. I did not follow that rule this time. Same. Same. Okay, okay, good. I'm glad good. I'm not the only one. Because I couldn't. There's like way too many good things out there. I was like, I got to cover this one again because it's yep. at a, a great price and I think more people need to get to this game or whatever. So, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So, I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we, uh, that's fortunate. We, but great minds. Um, there it is. Are, can't follow their own rules, apparently. Okay. So I've got the <laughs> thing. I've got the thing. And then we come back to us. Oh, I got to turn on the overhead to remind if uh, raids or whatever happened. Please let everybody know, folks, that we're in the middle of recording. Um, um, but we'll say hi soon enough. 
And um, yeah, otherwise, I think we are good to go. You, or you just checked. You can update the thingy down below. I've got your list of anonymous links. Hopefully, there's no Rickroll links in here this oh, time. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that boy. Was, okay. That was classic. <laughs> that um, was good. That I can never good. trust him now, uh, which yep. is not a comfortable feeling. <laughs> but I think we're ready to go otherwise. Okay. So, yeah. oh, oh, I see. All right, I need to have um, fun again on page as well. So do I have the browser view? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> and you're doing number 10. And $50 yep. gift certificate, the secret word, all the normal stuff. Okay, cool. Oh, and also, I was thinking after we're done... Um, you know, uh, you know, if there's a little bit of time left, although you'll have to run pretty quick to, uh, set up to do, um, uh, coyote, um, crow and co coyote and crow, uh, mm -hmm. I would actually be inclined to say, well, Hey, look at all these other freaking things on this, uh, um, sale yeah. that we did not talk about over 200 products. Yeah. And there were 20, I could have easily done a top 20 of these. Same. So same. We'll, we'll do a bit I, yeah. more afterwards. Um, okay. right. Okay. But cool. for now. I just got to bring up the logo. Boop. Okay. You ready? All right. I am ready. Hey, everybody. This week's episode of the r, &R Show is brought to you by Fun Again Games. And hello, Rel. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic, Richard. Always a pleasure to be here. And um, how are you? I'm doing okay. As we talked yeah. about in the pre-show, my foot continues to be a bother. Um, so that's kind of on the down. But on the up, we just bought an RV, which I'm incredibly excited about. Um, yes. Oh my, I'm, I'm just uh, a buzz with excitement. But this is not a show talking about feet or RVs. Although that would be a pretty good show too, I think. Um, <laughs> we are instead here to talk about games. Talking about the 10 games we would buy right now. And this is a cool episode to do it because our sponsor, Fun Again Games, is running a fall sale. And there were so many many great games to choose from, it was actually kind of tricky to narrow it down. But um, we've got 10 that we think really stood out amongst everything else. Although if you want to hear more, folks, there's an extended edition of this episode. Hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes, and you can watch the pre-show and the post-show that we streamed live. Or if you just want to know, hey, what are the 10? You're in the right place. And you're also in the right place because you might get lucky and win a $50 gift certificate. Well, how do they win? Wow, to win that $50 gift certificate, folks, just watch the show, the show enjoy, and uh, watch all the games that we're talking about, and during one of these uh, games, we're going to say the magic word, or the secret word, and one of us is going to say it, and you're going to take note of the game that we're talking about at that time, and then send the name of the game, not the secret word, in an email to contest at rotto.com. And what is our secret word today, my Correct. friend? Correct. Um, the secret word, which will be said by one of us, is RV. I wonder why, um, or I guess it's the secret acronym will be this week, yeah. the RV. <laughs> Listen for one of us to say it, send it to contest at rotto.com. But um, remember, folks, uh, we don't need you to tell us RV. We know that's the secret word. We need you to confirm you know what game we were talking about when RVs came up, just casually in conversation. All yeah. right. So, okay. um, as much as I'd like to continue talking about RVs, because that's all my <laughs> wife and I talk about these days, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments i am a font of rv wisdom but um we're here to talk about games we made them wait long enough well are you ready to go i am ready to go and as you said I, there are so many games to choose from uh, this week and i'm happy to talk about any of them but let's kick it off with number 10 star trek super skill pinball <laughs> now i'm excited about this i would buy this right now for two reasons Number one, Star Trek. I, I, while I'm not the big Star Trek fan that you are, yeah, I do love Star Trek. And number two, I've not played a super skill pinball game yet. Really? That? Yeah, that surprises me very me. much. It, it surprised me too. I love rolling rights and I love pinball. I absolutely love pinball. It's one of my favorite things to do in the world. As much as I love video games, honestly, give me a pinball machine any day of the week plus twice on Sunday, folks. I love them. And this combines, it's the best of both worlds. You're going to get four different tables. Now, this is a roll and write game, so you're yep. rolling dice to represent the, uh, the pinball, uh, rolling around, hitting targets, going off bumpers and spinners and whatnot. But this version is special because you have four different tables, uh, each with unique art and different challenges. Mm -hmm. And they're all 
<laughs> they're, they're classic Star Trek um, yes. uh, episodes and uh, tropes. And you have the Starfleet Academy. You have the Trouble with Tribbles, which is so near and dear to my heart. Yep. And then you have the Lower Decks and you have a Borg, Borg Attack. Now, the Starfleet Academy one, this cracks me up. I love the fact that you're trying to beat the Kobayashi Maru. And uh, that, that, nice. that makes me laugh to no yes. end because all I'm thinking is like, okay, can I just cheat this the way that Captain Kirk would cheat it? But I don't know. I That's why I would buy this right now because I want to find out more about Super Skill Pinball. I know you've done. Uh, you are a fan of this game. Okay, I think I the Super Skill Pinball series is great. And by the way, folks, mm -hmm. you could get it regular, or you could get a couple bucks off from the old Ding and Dent um, as well. In nice. fact, I just noticed the Ding and Dent while I was uh, bringing it up, and that makes me think. Well, I need to pick this up because I love Star Trek. I do not love pinball, but I do love roll and rights. And, and you're right. This this is a great roll and write in its in just on its own merits. Uh, mm -hmm. That really surprises us. It's a great job of capturing the feel of pinball because you've got these really cool pinball pieces that every round they are they are inexorably moving down, 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 closer yeah. and closer to your flippers at the bottom. And um, you know how you're rolling and writing determines the path that they are going to take. It's incredibly thematic. My only complaint yeah. with the entire series is. They are a bit on the long side. I wouldn't mind if they were a little bit shorter, but that's a minor yeah. complaint if you're having fun. And, I mean, the the sense of humor. I mean, Star Trek Lower Decks, I I, I, I have to try this myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that is yeah. an excellent choice. I'm, I Again, I am aghast. I am flabbergasted. I My jaw is dropping that you haven't played it because you definitely need to. I know. I need to, yeah. So, that, again, what better way to kick it off than a Star Trek uh, person in it? So I will... Definitely be uh, playing this real soon. Cool, but cool, cool. That's number ten. Let's move on to our number nine. All right, number nine is uh, it's not from I, I I've got several titles to talk about from the uh, the the fall sale, but this is just a, a new release that came out that I have to admit at first I was not that interested in Nightfall, um, and I don't know if you know anything about this one or well. It, it may have been on my list that didn't make it on the list. Oh, really? It made your short list, huh? <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. Well, made my short list. It makes my short list because it is from artist and co-designer Ryan Lockett, Red yes. Raven Games, you know, one of my absolute faves of all time. And the reason I, I, I first had dismissed this is because on the surface, this is a skirmish game um, that can. It's really ideally played as a two or four player skirmish, although there are rules for solo and three player as well, where one team controls the uh, defenders, knights, and um, elders who are protecting this castle that is randomly generated and full of all kinds of tiles you can stand on that give you special abilities, and the other player controls the demons that are invading. And so it is a very back and forth chess type match with lots of special effects. Uh, it kind of has a. Marvel Champions vibe to me because every round you draw, I think, four cards, if I recall correctly, and pretty much you always play all of them. You know, So it's a very tactical game of, okay, what have I got? What's on the board? Oh, oh, if I do this and then this and then this, I could really pull some stuff off. But as, as interesting as the art and the, the pedigree of the developer is, I don't, I don't care about running around and trying to beat the crap out of Ruel's um, minions. But then I found out they've also included cooperative and solo rules. And that's what brings me in. Where players work together. It becomes a one, two, or three uh, co-op game for uh, one, two, or three players. And we are all the knights trying to protect from the demons. And the demons are drawn by an automated system. And that's what I really want to see. Because uh, every round... You draw two cards from their deck, and I believe you end up doing a major attack for them and a minor attack for them. And as I understand it, what really pulls me in is they are brutal. If you're playing the co-op game, this is one of those ghost stories type co-op games. It just really rips you apart. It's fast, it's brutal, it's terrifying from start to finish, and it's got amazing Ryan Lockett art and his design sensibilities, um, you know, working with a co-designer, which is why I am very, very intrigued. I would definitely at some point like to give Nightfall a try. So that's why that made the shortlist. Yeah, and that those two words, Ryan Lockett. That's what mm -hmm. you know. I saw that, and I was immediately interested for the reasons you spoke of and more. And I, you know, yeah, thinking about the solo and co-op, uh, I immediately thought, hey, you know, you you would be into this. And oh yeah, um, th there it is. All right, great choice. I'm gonna move on to our number eight, and okay, this is sir. a game we have both talked about um, in the past, and it's on sale right now, and that's why I put it on the list. Dice Miner. Okay. Um, oh yes, this was. Yeah, th th so this is the yeah. first one that's actually taken from the big fall sale. Yes. Right. So, folks, it's normally thirty four ninety five. You can get it for twenty two ninety nine 
Honestly, I would pay full price for this. I love this game. We actually, the first time Richard and I met in person was earlier <laughs> this year. The very first game, I think it's the first game we played yes, together, it wasn't was. it? Yes, okay, it was. Okay, it was Dice Miner. A wonderful game of you are dwarves uh, digging in the mountains and trying to get all the treasures and whatnot and avoid dragons and so forth. By doing this really cool thing where you're dropping dice in this 3D mountain and you're taking the dice away from this. There's a little puzzle to it, like which ones do you want to take out because the other ones are going to fall in and you're going to try to get different sets of them. You know, you try to get uh, numerical sets like Yahtzee style, one through five, and you're trying to offset the dragons with, I think it's shields and uh, you have magic, which allows you to reroll and you have gold coins. And it's really uh, just for a 20 minute game. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah. It's so easy to set up. And yet you're still, every single time, you've got a nice little decision you've got to make. I mean, sometimes it's clear what you're going to take. But most of the time, especially early in the round, you have some really interesting choices. Like, do I take this and, and leave this for my opponent? Or am I trying to do this or that? Oh, I, I love it. Michelle and I are insta fans of this. And you do have, like, uh, variable uh, asymmetric powers, uh, abilities that you um, pick at the start of the game. Oh, man. Uh, we played this a ton, and I'm so glad I got to play it with you. And actually, our friend uh, Dwayne from Blackboard Gaming uh, joined us as yes. well. Uh, wonderful game. Dice Miner, folks. I've been hyped about this ever since last year, and I still, still think it holds up to this day, and especially at that price, over there on Fun Again Games. So that's our number eight, Dice Miner. I cannot argue with that at all. I just checked while you were talking, because uh, after I played it with you, I got home and I got myself a copy. Uh, is that something oh, yeah, I that's very great. rarely do. In a world where, basically, <laughs> all the games I play or ones that publishers send me to play, uh, you know, for coverage on the channel. I went out and got this myself. I wanted it so bad after playing it with you, and it ultimately ended up being my number 11 best game for 2021. It's that nice. good. It's yeah. so simple and clean and pure and elegant. My wife loves it too. And yeah, yeah. it's. we actually talked about this one, I think, a few months ago on the r, &R show. It's now yeah. actually five bucks cheaper than it was a couple of months ago um, with this fall <laughs> sale it. that's going on right now. So an excellent choice, sir. Very, very, Thank you. very much approved. I thought about putting right. it on my list as well, but there are ones that I'm even more excited about. So mm -hmm. let's talk about another one, an uh, another from the uh, recent releases. Uh, it is Remix. Although I think actually the full title, let me fix that, is Marvel Remix. Mm -hmm. Marvel colon remix. And this is basically, um, a, 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 there's a very popular game that's been around for years now. It's gotten a lot of expansions called Fantasy Realms. And um, I have played Fantasy Realms. Fantasy Realms is absolutely freaking brilliant. Um, a, a high fantasy game where everybody starts the game with a hand of cards that score points in different ways. And every turn, you're going to um, give off a card, give away a card to like a common discard pile, and then get another card, either taken from that discard pile or drawn blind. And we're going to do this for a little while, and when the game is over, you have the same number of cards as when you started with, unless you got some special powers, and you're just trying to draft the perfect collection of what well, used to be fantasy characters, you know, paladins and, and clerics and, and dragons and whatnot, but now it's Marvel superheroes. Yay, Marvel superheroes. <laughs> My wife won't play, um, oh, was it? My wife will not play, uh, uh, Marvel Champions with me anymore because it's just gotten too top heavy and complex. So this is how I get my Marvel back in my life. Uh, <laughs> I am so excited about this. And when I saw it, it is now available, well, I'm telling you right now, I am going to be getting a copy of this game. Make no mistake because I want to play it on the road in the RV with my wife. I am really nice. stoked for it, especially because it doesn't just one for one recreate the you know the the overall flow. It does cool things, especially it borrows the uh, superhero idea of heroes leveling up and kind of transmogrifying. Like, one of the cards, I believe, is Jean Grey. And if you get certain other cards that support Jean Grey, you take her in your hand and you flip her over 180 degrees, which shows that, oh, now she's Phoenix. And oh, that's okay. awesome! And I, I hope that. they do that with a lot of characters. I'm very, very excited about number seven, Marvel Remix. I, I love it. And this is the type of game that I feel like I can get my Marvel fix as well because uh, Michelle would not play Marvel Champions with me because uh, it's not really her jam. But th this type of game, yeah, I can see that uh, being uh, be getting to the table often. Oh, great choice. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to our number six. Uh, this one I feel like is an overlooked one and I think at a, a nice price uh, these days or fun again. 100 Tori. Oh, right. Um, okay. Yeah, I feel like this is a little underrated. Uh, it is by designer Scott Caputo. And Scott, folks, if you don't know, he's the master, or he is the designer behind Whistle Mountain, 
Whistle yep. Stop, Sorcerer yep. City, a bunch of other games. And this game, 100 Tori, has art by one of your favorite artists in mind as well, Vincent Dutre. Yep. Um, this is a tile lane set collection game set in the Japanese garden. Uh, you're just uh, laying tiles on trying to connect a path, but that path is going to leave you a bunch of different objects, whether it's uh, poets, samurais, uh, gardens, like, you know, or uh, people, and then objects as well. Um, landmarks and the those gates in Japan, the Tori gates. You're going to go through those, and those will score you points. I really enjoyed this game. I think it is, I don't, for whatever reason, it's overlooked, um, you know, because there's a lot of tiling games nowadays. Uh, right. And, but this one, it's beautiful and it's, um, you know, elegant. The scoring, I think, might be part of it. I, it is a little funky scoring. It uh, is, right? Like, it's all about building these roads and then, hey, when yeah. I score, I score everything that's along the road, but the roads are constantly mm -hmm. shifting and you're putting gates yeah. down, which aren't in this picture, but, you know, there's some nice components with it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that might be part of the reason why it's overlooked because it does, it's an interesting game because... As the game progresses, it can get a bit much. Like you're trying to optimally place yes. your uh, path to get to the most points, and it, it can lend itself to a little AP. But I, I still enjoy it. I think it's fantastic. Again, Vincent Dutre's art in this one is absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's why we chose number six, the 100 Tory. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, yeah, Mr. Scott Caputo is fast establishing himself as one of the premier. Hey, whenever I use Tile Lang. I do cool and interesting stuff that you haven't yep. seen before. And uh, yeah, a, a wonderful, charming, just peaceful game, yeah. I would have to yeah. say. Okay, Definitely. well, moving on to number five. I am back to the fall sale, folks, uh, for Free Radicals, which, oh, oh my yeah. gosh. I, now, this is not the first time we have talked about this game. For, free Radicals currently sits in my top 10 games of 2022. I love this game to pieces so much because at its heart, it is not one game. It is 10 games in one. When you get this game, you are getting two different tile land games. You're getting a Moncala game. You're getting a deck building game. You're getting an engine building game. You're getting a uh, sword and sorcery adventure game because when you set up to play, um, and, you know, and this game is set in the far flung future where mankind has gotten their crap together. This is not an apocalyptic future. This is a positive, optimistic view of the future where people work together. And even in this society where we still compete for glory and attention, the best way forward is to help your opponents because um, you're constantly collecting resources in whatever game you play. Because when you set up, each player is going to play a unique game. Whether they are the executives of the world and they are literally playing a Mon Call game or whether they are um, you know, MMO uh, championship uh, virtual reality champions who are playing... A an adventure game and being watched by thousands everybody's playing a different style of game they're fun they're simple they're kind of like streamlined elegant versions of what a dominoes game would be or an engine building game would be or a worker placement game would be or a multi-use card game would be we all have a totally unique game to play but we all interact with the same um big city where we spend our resources to build buildings that usually will help our opponents more than us but every time an opponent uses one of our buildings we get a little something something. But even better, one of the things you can do in this game is um, donate resources that are... the. The, all the resources in this game represent knowledge. The further advancement of humanity as a species. And everybody has their own track they can move up. And you can just move your track up. so that you Because whoever whoever's earned the most knowledge for their faction gets the most points at the end of the game. But that's a sucker's game. Because you're much better off sharing that knowledge with your opponents so they can move up. Because every time I move your knowledge up, well, I get huge benefits right now that can catapult me to victory. I love the message of this game. I I love the variety of this game. I love the presentation. It's just a bright, happy, sunny game. Uh, after playing so many dour, depressing, um, Blade Runner-inspired future dystopias, it's really nice to play a little bit in the opposite. And every time I play, I get a very unique experience where the Mon it's the Moncala versus the deck-building game, or whatever it might be, in Free Radicals. Yeah, I saw this. I thought about putting it on my list, but I, I had a feeling you were going to put it on your list. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, glad you did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, uh, just to, uh, to come back yeah. to it, normally we don't talk about money. We talked about this a couple of months ago when it first went on sale. At that point, yeah. it was, um, you know, SRP is 69, but they had it for sale at 55, which was good. It's at 39 now. Yeah. That is Even an incredible better. price yeah. for literally getting 10 games in one box. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely Great. incredible. Yeah. Great deal, and I, I 
I'm so close to just starting clicking on links right now to start buying stuff. It, this, I mean, those those are great prices. But let's move on uh, to our next game. Yes. And let me get this here. Uh, our number four is a game I'm really interested in. I have not played it, and I'm wondering if you have. It's called One Small Step. No, I this, have not. This is from Academy Games, and the reason. Oh my gosh! Down out, from seventy to forty-one bucks. Look wow. at that. Okay. Yeah, the price <laughs> it's nearly half off. But Academy Games has put out two games that are very near and dear to my heart: 1776 Rebellion sure. and Freedom: The, the Underground, Underground Railroad. Railroad. Yeah. And the this game uh, continues that uh, line, and they're educational, or they can be used for educational purposes. And uh, they actually, um, you know, for those other two games I just spoke about, Rebellion and uh, Underground Railroad, they actually have books that they have used in uh, high school curriculums. Right. And this game, One Small Step, uh, I, I think it does the same thing. But anyways, what it is, it's U.S. versus Soviet Union. Sure. It is a race to the moon, folks. Mm -hmm. And you are, uh, it's a worker placement game, so right there I piqued my interest. But also... You are. You can play this a two on two, or you can play it a one on one. Okay. Where you, uh, the two on two version is a team version, so you're going to be either an administrator or an engineer, and what you're doing is trying to get your ship and your uh, rocket to the moon first. So you're going to have to. There's like nine different resources in this game, so you're doing all kinds of stuff, doing you know placing your workers, converting those resources to get ready to man a mission uh, to the moon, and whoever's first is going to win the game. There's a lot of historical background uh, on it, and you know it, it can be used in the classroom apparently because that's what Academy Games does. Yeah. And that reason alone, I love. Um, you know, my wife Michelle, she's a teacher. We're always trying to find games that she could use in the classroom. This, I believe, could be one of them. Um, I just, I, I just love the theme of this, and I love the fact that it's a worker placement game that allows me to race my opponent to the moon. That's why it's our number four. That is one small step. Good choice. Academy Games is not necessarily the hottest, most well-known publisher in the board game sphere, but they are certainly well-known for always putting out fantastic, well-considered designs that are really hue very close to history. They could almost be used as um, history lessons in a box, yep. and yet... They do not sacrifice on the fun. They don't feel like edutainment. I've played yeah. several of their games, including, as you mentioned, Freedom of the Underground Railroad, and I've always been very impressed. Agreed. Agreed. Good choice, then. Thank you. Yeah, I totally All missed right. that one. A good call. Good call. Yeah. But you know what? As cool as that one is, Ruel, it is not as cool as number three, the founders of Teotihuacan. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yep. I know you're now excited about that. Yeah, and the reason why I'm laughing, folks, if you watch the uh, extended edition, we actually talked a little bit about this game. I ranked it on my personal collection during the pre-show, so be sure to click on that eye and uh, check that out. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. The, if you, we go into this game in fair bit of depth in the extended uh, video, but I'll tell you right now, Founders of Teotihuacan is in my top ten games of 2022 so far. There's still a few months. There's still going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out at Essen, so it might get supplanted. It might get pushed out. But this is such an amazing cross of really fresh interesting worker placement quite unlike anything that's ever been done before where my workers build on the strength of your workers and then subsequently your workers become stronger because of my workers but then uh, so it's got really cool worker placement but it's also a very very cool polyomino tile laying game as well with some really clever restrictions and real straight jackets they put you in where you want like always to get your tiles as close together as possible but you want them as far apart as possible and so there's a really interesting dynamic push pull as you're trying to build, you know, the, the great uh, pyramid of Teotihuacan. And uh, yeah, it is absolutely phenomenal. We talked about this one a few months ago on the show as well, when it yep. first went in. And at that point, I went back and looked. It was 35 bucks. It's at 28 bucks now. Or I'm sorry, wow. 28.99, so 29 bucks. So um, yeah, this is, I'm telling you right now, folks, if you love worker placement and you love polyamino tile laying, this is one of the best games of the year, and it's worth checking out. Number three. Agreed. The founders of yeah, uh, yeah, agreed. And same here. It's one of my top three of this year so far, and I don't see it leaving that before the end of the year. It is an absolutely fantastic game. Great choice. Uh, let's move on to our top two now. Okay. I've got number two right here, and it should be no surprise what's coming, folks. But if you know, I know, I know what your number one is right now. I'm yeah, there confident it is. I know, but I do not know your there number it is. two. Well, Twilight Inscription. Whoa! Oh, hold on, then. I don't know Imagine. what your number one is. Hold on. Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. Oh, wait. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, I forgot. Folks, yeah. this is a top ten. It's a combination <laughs> of my top five and Ruel's okay. top five. Of course, your number one is really number two on the list. Um, yeah. Yes, of course, it's Twilight Inscription with yeah. promo dice pack, by the way. Oh, 
I did not notice that. So there's a promo I... dice pack, and you get it at a discount. Very nice. Um, folks, you all know I love Twilight Imperium. But he does. even I'm, you know, anyone that loves that game, it's you all admit, it's going to take hours and hours. It's a full-day adventure. Mm -hmm. Twilight Inscription is the roll night version of it that you can play in under two hours, my friends. And the best of all, you can solo it. And yeah. Now, I have not played this game yet, but I've watched some videos. We actually have a video from yes. Amy and Maggie here on the channel. They did a great run through of it. One of the first ones they that did. were out. Yeah, they did. Amazing. Yes. And what you're doing is you've got four different big sheets of um, laminated paper on in front of you. And that's going to represent the galaxy that you're trying to conquer. Uh, just like in Twilight Imperium, it's a 4X game, but they streamlined it down. And from what I've seen and what I've read and what I've uh, heard, it really captures the feeling of Twilight Imperium, but does it in a cool roll and right way where you're taking re all kinds of resources, converting them to make better ships because those ships are going to fly out and some will do combat. You know, there may be a fight or two, but that's not going to be, you don't have to fight in order to win, which is the, the great mm -hmm. thing about Twilight Imperium as well. There are different ways to score points. And in this game, you're going to, whoever scores the most points will win the game. Uh, that they're going to be the lead of the uh, ruler of the galaxy. What I think is really neat. Folks have been comparing this to Hadrian's wall as far as mm. combos and okay. stuff, mm -hmm. but they, they're saying that this is more accessible and a little more streamlined wow. than Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, okay. and that's what I'm excited about. I want that experience, but again, I want it more in a way that's a, a little more accessible because I know Twilight Imperium can be a big, big, big game, obviously, but if they've done it in a way that I can solo it and play it under, like, uh, under two hours, man, I'm all about it. And that's why I've been excited about this game all year long, and that's why it's <laughs> our number two Twilight Inscription. And don't forget to get that promo dice pack as well. Yeah. Um, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, you know, um, folks, uh, in case you don't know, we live stream this show. That's where the extended edition comes from, the full live stream with the pre-show and the post-show. I just looked over and the audience is talking amongst themselves. Yeah, Twilight Inscription is great. I'm getting it tomorrow. I'm loving it right now. It's fantastic. <laughs> Yo, so, it's not yeah. just us, folks. It seems like, I, as long as you don't go in expecting to, you expect a roll and write with a T I, uh, Twilight Imperium flavor then right. you'll you'll be happy yeah yeah and that's that's exactly what it is you get the flair obviously you cannot replicate the entire game in, in a roll and right but you know i was you know before we did the show or before it even was a thing i remember thinking twilight inscription is either gonna be one of the greatest roll and rights ever or like one of the worst i don't <laughs> think there's any middle ground and I, from everything i've heard and seen it seems like it's going towards the other side the good side so yep. uh there it is our number two twilight inscription all right well that's an excellent one um but we've got one more to go the number one on this list although again remember this is my number one uh ruel's number one was twilight inscription just for the record there these are all great though and these are all you know, hey, it's the fall sale. They're amazing prices. And I'll be honest, one of the big things that made me push this all the way to the top, Merchants of the Dark Road, uh, which again, we have talked about in previous episodes, is yep. the price. When we talked about this, the originally Ooh. 60 bucks, it was at 39 when it was first on. It's now down to 31 or 32. And if you uh, don't necessarily go by my run through, because when I covered it, I covered a prototype. If you go out and look at unboxings of this game, it is stupid. Stunning! There is no way this doesn't make a lot of people shortlist for best production of the year. Um, from the cool magnetic clasp of the boards that snap together with actual freaking magnets. How do magnets work? Um, and, um, you know, really stunningly gorgeous dice. A whole bunch of them. Uh, but then the gameplay itself definitely lives up to the production from Elf Creek Games and designer Brian Shure. There's two halves to this game. It's mostly a Rondell game where you are always trying traveling clockwise around in the big merchant city trying to um you know get contracts for deliveries out to the to the, the dark road um to get the goods that they want out on the dark road to pick up some uh hitchhikers that might uh, tag along with you on the dark road and um also as you're filling up your cool little uh, merchant's wagon with stuff other people can see oh i bet they're about to go to thistledown aren't they you know what if I time it right, I could piggyback on their caravan, and even though it's not my turn, I could make some deliveries on my own. And they would face the danger of the Dark Road, and I would get all the benefits. So this is a game where there's really interesting indirect interaction between players, because you are so deeply involved with what everybody else does. The whole thing is driven by a really wonderful... It's not dice drafting. Everybody has their own set of dice, but what you have to do is you have dice rolled immediately, and you have to put them into a, an action queue that you will be able to use them later. So this game is 
full of tactical surprises that come up as people make opportunities available to buy buy low and sell high. Um, that's right. Yes, yes, buy low and sell high. But there's also <laughs> long-term strategy because often you're like, oh, I can take it, but I didn't put the right die in the slot. I can't do the right action right now. What am I going to do? It's a brilliant gameplay and a stunning presentation. Um, you know, I mean, the other big game that came from Elf Creek Game, Honey Buzz, also got a lot of, uh, you know, mad respect for its production. Elf Creek Games, they know how to make a pretty game and they know how to make a fun game. And now, because of the sale, it's an incredibly affordable game, which is why it came in at number one, Merchants of the Dark Road. Great choice. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really enjoyed this game when I played it, um, I think, earlier this year. And the, the rondelle, the action cue that you have, and just the production quality. Uh, oh, through man, the roof. yeah, yeah. Second Elf Creek, they're, yeah, they're, they're doing some excellent, excellent work Yeah, there. If that had come from oh. another publisher on Kickstarter, you know, they, it'd be, oh, yeah, the base game is 90 bucks, 100 bucks kind of a thing because of just the amazing yep. content. But oh, yep. all that aside, the game is fun. It's available, but we are done, folks. Uh, and I got to ask, did you hear either Ruel or myself talk about RVs during that um, that quick top 10? Because if so, you know what to do. Send that email to questions at rotto. No, not questions. Contest at rotto.com. If you have any questions for me, please send them to questions at rotto.com. So they'll go into the next Rotto Talks Through podcast. Uh, I have so many rotto.com emails. Uh, but anyway, contest at rotto.com. What was the game when Ruel or I said RV? And you could be entered to win a $50 gift certificate that could go directly towards some of those games. And you'll have it immediately while that fall sale is still going on. Or actually, no, you won't have it till next week. I don't know how long the fall sale is going. Oh, oh now I feel really bad. What if the fall sale is over when they get the $50? Well, what happens uh, then? Yeah. Well, well, hopefully it'll still be on. I mean, yeah. There's plenty yeah. of good stuff. It's a good yeah. time to be a board gamer. And that's it, Ruel. So, um, did I miss anything? Are we ready to go into the post show? Yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's go do the post show. All right, then. Well, folks, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, well, thank you very much for co-hosting. And finally, uh, to Fun Again Games, thanks very much for sponsoring the show. Have a good day, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye Okay, and we're out. Oh, all right. Cool. Good all show. Right. That went pretty well. Um, yeah. Little Buster, thank you for subscribing. And thank you Yay. for gifting subscriptions as well. That was above and beyond. Oh, um, cool. Uh, uh, English KRJP, I hope you enjoy your avatar, who should have appeared by now down there. Okay. We are in the po R and R post show. And, uh, wow, okay. We got we got through that list fast. Yeah, we did. Yes, um, we did. Which, which is a good thing, because I've got to get ready for my stream in a Oh, few you minutes, do. So... But before we get going, before I get going, you want to talk about the rest of the games on our list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, here's the deal. Uh, or do you just have a list you want to go? I was just going to bring the uh, browser back up. Oh, yeah, bring the browser. And just go oh. into the, uh, let's see, let's sort yeah. it by best-selling, the most popular stuff up top. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, let's, let's just do that. I mean, there's your dice miner right there, you yeah. know. Of, you know, 12 bucks off of MSRP. Um, yep. I thought about putting Origins, first builders on the list. Yeah, I thought that might be on there. Yep. I kind of thought you might throw Takenu on. Yeah. I actually thought about Curious Cargo. Yep. Uh, Gutenberg I thought about. Gutenberg uh, I came the very The Unmatched close. Hell's Kitchen. Uh, I love Unmatched. I, 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 oh, really? Besides Spider-Man, my other favorite superhero, Daredevil. And that's what got, got me, gets me into Hell's Kitchen. Each one of these is a standalone game, right? Or they also yes. plug into every other Unmatched, right? Yeah. They can plug into every other Unmatched, yes. Uh, so you can have Daredevil fight, you know, um, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. That yeah, yeah. Stuff. Um, I thought for sure Karuba was going to make your list. I, I really thought about that one, yeah. I mean, 26 bucks, that was a steal. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you yeah, know, uh, Dorn for Life. Yep. The original, the, the OG Dornheads right here, and neither of us put it on our list for shame. <laughs> Dorn, for um, shame. You, know, you know, Dorm shames us now. Uh, <laughs> Alma Mater is great. Yeah, that was on my list. I don't know what Paladin of the West Kingdom City of Cro Crowns is. I assume it's an expansion that I've missed somewhere along the yeah, way. Yeah, it right? is an expansion. That is, that is correct. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and, and I also thought you... I, I, we normally don't do expansions on these lists, right? Yes, I I, that was one of the things. There were several expansions. Like, there yeah. are so many really cool expansions for Railroad Inc. Yeah. There's like I a half that dozen batch. $5 expansions. Yep. They all look yeah. awesome. I want them all. Yes. I thought for sure you were going to throw a Tiny Epic Galaxies on, too. I Didn't was so to close to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Another one I was uh, on my short list. Yep. Uh, we did Founders. Yep. Um, I'm glad you include Founders. Uh I was going to do Cloud City, but I know we talked about that recently. Mm, okay. 
Yep. Yeah. Wonder Woman, Challenge of the Amazons, as far as I'm concerned, is the best game that Prospero Hall ever designed. Really? And for some reason, it oh. just completely fell through the cracks. Everybody huh. raves about... Um, oh, what's the the Universal Monsters one? Is it Monstrous yeah, or something um, like that? Horrified. Horrified. Uh, or yeah. the, the Back to the Future one. But Wonder Woman eclipses all of them. It is oh, by far... Okay. Um, you know, and it's, it's available there. Oh, Steampunk nice. Rally Fusion. That yep. made my short list. Yeah. Uh, right. And that, those are just the uh, the hottest things. It just keeps going. Oh, Foothills. Yeah. I really... Foothills is probably... would have been my number six. And City oh, Skylines, really? too. These are both great. I've done run-throughs oh. for both. Okay. Um, oh, uh, uh, again, we weren't doing expansions, or I would have definitely yeah, put Gugong, uh, yep. Gugong Panjun. Yeah. Streets is a really great card tile layer. I know you love Dive. Yeah, Dive. That was on my short list as well. Love Jeez. that game. Um, it's so just much good too stuff. much. Oh, and there's Merchants. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, there, there's like eight pages of this stuff, and you do have to yeah. go. So yeah. let's go on okay. ahead, and uh, you bail now. I will uh, chat with the people for a few minutes while you get ready. Uh, you can send a message. Uh, send a message okay. with a question mark, so I'll see it in the queue. <laughs> okay, well, I'll um, do that. And then we'll, uh, we'll do, do the that. raid. Uh, hey, yeah. uh, give a, snack, uh, a sneak peek. Can you put your overhead on now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me uh, give you all a sneak peek real quick. Uh, this is what I'm playing right here. Oh, um, Nasty. Uh, I'm going to have to set up this. But anyways, it's a roll right, folks. It, there are the dice. It's not six-sided. There are 12-sided dice. Here. Ooh, you don't see that So. Very well. That's going to be really cool. And um, it was designed by um, Connor Alexander, developed by Daryl Andrews, um, who okay. was one of the, the designer of Sagrada. So right. that's why I'm really looking forward to this. I can't wait to show it off to y'all. Um, so join me in exactly 15, 14 minutes uh, when I go live on my uh, Twitch channel. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's interesting. And you guys... It's, it's on Backerkit, and I think... Really, what's on Backerkit is this Crow and Coyote Indigenous Peoples RPG. Right? That's yes. actually the main thing. And then, hey, oh, by the way, we've made a roll and write in our universe that's also available during this campaign. Yeah, I think that's the coolest thing. So this is a game that the characters would play within the oh. RPG. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I didn't realize that. And then, yeah, and then they said, hey, why don't we just make this uh, an actual thing? So they did, and I think that's such a cool idea. And what's really neat, too, Richard, is the roll and write itself, it's based on some indigenous uh, games of the past. Oh, wow. So they've taken that and then developed it. You know, they have some modern touches. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be showing you all uh, some of the optional rules that you can add on to it to make it more gamery or more modern. Um, um, it's basically, think of a, a Yahtzee-style game, but then with a bunch of other stuff on it. Uh, but you'll be seeing that in a few minutes. Um, thank you, Richard, again for uh, raiding into me in a few minutes. Yes, um, yes, yes. I appreciate it. We will and see uh, thank you, friends, for watching the R&R Show. Appreciate that. All right, get out of here. I'm out. All right. Well, out, and then you get the mirror of me. Uh, let's come back to me, and let's hide the mirror of me. Nobody needs to see that. So just tick that tickety-boo right there. Hey, everybody. Now that that guy's gone, we can talk bad about him behind his back. Or we can just answer some questions. we got a few minutes. He's got to set up, make sure he's up and running. And so, folks, as always, if you have questions about anything, including RV life, put them in the chat right now, starting with a question mark, because that means it goes into a queue that is very, very easy for me to catch and not miss those uh, important questions you have. So um, we'll start with Kabuki Kid, who knows how to work the system. Kabuki Kid demands a chicken update. Um, let's see. What was the last time we did have to dispatch a chicken? That was a... I feel like I've already talked about that. I don't know if that's very interesting. If you have questions about... I mean... When uh, some of these chickens get old and their quality of life is not good, we have a very sharp knife. And Jen says, that's my job. Um, and so we uh, said goodbye to one recently. And then, you know, we uh, pluck them and, you know, do all the, put them in. I forget if it's hot water or cold water we have to put them in so we can pluck them really easy. So we can, you know, use them and the dogs get the innards that we don't want. So we, we use the whole chicken after having given them the best chicken life they ever could have had. And so that recently happened because one of them, um, oh, that's right. Yes, one of them had gone super broody and just uh, was really having a terrible quality of life and didn't seem to be snapping out of it. We, we left her for almost two months. And then another one just died, just uh, got old and died. And we saw, had no idea that was coming. The uh, three chicks we had gotten, uh, they are almost full size now. I don't know. I don't think they're doing the peep, peep, peep anymore. They are no longer cute. They actually, it's interesting, they're at the stage where they pretty much look exactly like velociraptors with, uh, without arms and with feathers. And they move around just like, it's always uncanny to see a chicken running uh, and looking just like a little uh, velociraptor trying to eat you. So things are going okay. 
Um, we recently had a neighbor move in next door who has wanted chickens her whole life. She is a retiree who moved into this town to be closer to her son's family. It's just a few blocks away. And so she moved in and she said, oh my God, you have chickens? And Jen said, oh, do you like chickens? Said, I don't know. I've always wanted it. And Jen just said, here, have a chicken. And just handed it to her while they were standing around in the backyard. She's like, oh my God, I'm holding a chicken. My whole life I've never done this. And so she's in love with these chickens. So we, it's really convenient that if we go on, a, say, a two-week road trip, we've got a next door neighbor who is ex ready ready and excited to take care of them in our absence. Um, they are also, um, um, what is it, uh, molting right now. So even though we've got, I think, 17 chickens, we're getting like three or four eggs a day, which is ridiculous. But they'll snap out of it soon. So that is the chicken update. Oh, and I see uh, where are the chickens going to ride in the RV. Nope. Uh, RVs are for humans and dogs, which is what we're really, one of the biggest things I think that's so transformative about this approach to travel is that, you know, I mean, any trip, no matter how good we've ever been on, after about a week, Jen's is jonesing to get home because she wants to get home to the dog. She wants to get back to her life. She wants to get home. She just wants to be comfortable. But the thing is, if you take your home with you on the road, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's early days. The plan is we do this quick little two week trip, and maybe we'll discover we hate it, and in a month we'll put the thing on the market and just you know flip it for practically what we paid for. Who knows? Maybe we'll even uh, because actually it's interesting. We were able to get a fairly good price on it. It had been on the market for ninety days because it was for sale deep in the middle of the Bay Area, and the Bay Area is not RV country. You don't get a lot of people going to the Bay Area to buy an RV. So the owner um, was having a really hard time selling it. We came along, talked her down. Uh, 4,000 after she'd already taken 2,000 off herself. And so we got to go down and get it. But, um, you know, if, where we are, there's all kinds of, you know, we're in RV country. We're not as much as some, but we'd probably be able to flip it. So it's, it's almost like no risk picking this thing up, uh, trying it out, and maybe it'll change our lives. Um, and it will certainly, if that happens, it'll change the chickens' lives too. I don't know that our neighbor who loves those chickens, but I don't know if she loves them enough to take care of them for like six months at a time. That might be a bit of an ask, but who knows? She really likes those chickens. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, where did you find the RV? Was it on RV site or something like Facebook Marketplace? Here is the story of finding that RV. My brother-in-law, Ron, who um, Ron and uh, Jen's sister, Becky, they, like us, dream of someday living on the open road, the nomadic lifestyle. That's like a long-term goal for them, too. And so Ron has been studying up on RVs for years. They have actually gone through, um, I think, two or three tow-behinds with their big trucks they've got. And they're in between one now, but they're looking at, um, you know, trying. Once their kids have gone off to college, they're both in uh, high school and junior high right now. So in a few years, when the kids go off to college, that's when they say, okay, it's our turn. Um, but anyway, so Ron has become an expert. He's one of those incredibly handy guys. He knows how to fix engines and all the rest of it. Um, and he was visiting briefly. He was just standing the night because then he had to drive on somewhere. And we were just like a pit stop for him. And as Jen walked him out to the car the next morning, I didn't follow out because of my foot. But uh, Jen came back in and said, Ron and I had a great idea. Um... If we see any great RVs down where they live, you know, near the Bay Area, just south of the Bay Area, he'll go out and inspect it for us and let us know if it's a good deal or if we're getting ripped off. And I don't know. I think that was really more Jen's idea. And Ron's just an easygoing guy who said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. But anyway, he agreed to it. And I went on to, to answer the question, Delta, it was RVTrader.com. I, I did several, but I just did a search for, hey, anything within 50 miles of, of their address. And this was literally one of the first three or four I found. And I looked at it, and I looked at the pictures, and oh my God. Because the interesting thing is, two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, Jen and I really got hit with, bit with the RV bug, and we started going to local dealerships, and we did test drives and stuff like that. And we found one RV at the time, they're like, oh my God, this is so perfect. Uh, it's, it's cheap. It's, it, it had over a hundred thousand miles. So we knew it was kind of iffy, but it was really, really cheap for an RV. And we were really close. We actually even put money down, but Ron eventually talked us out of it. Uh, because he said, no, no, no there's going to be problems with this. Don't do it. I mean, you know, and that's when the first time he really, uh, blew us away with his incredible in-depth knowledge of uh, RVs and maintenance and what to look for and what to be worried about. So we ultimately ended up not buying it and got our deposit back and all that. I went and looked it up. That model that we fell so hard and in love with, um, you know, whatever, 15 months ago, it is a, it was a Winnebago. It was also a 2003. We ended up getting a 2003 Brave. It was a 2003 Adventurer. And the Adventurer was just basically the upscale version of the one we have now bought. So it's like, it's kismet. I mean, I didn't even know at the time that I found what was the perfect for us that we'd already discovered nine or 
15 months ago. So anyway, RV Trader, it was really, really great. We contacted them, um, and uh, Ron went out, thought it was absolutely amazing. He said, I mean, yeah, you have to buy this. You absolutely have to. If you don't, we will. Um, although one thing is, you know, Jen and I, we're not going to be using it all the time. And we said, hey, you've done so much help with us already. You have a standing offer. Anytime you and Becky want to get away for a week, the RV is yours. Although, of course, they live in Central California and we live in Southern Washington. But we can worry about that later. Anyway, so yeah, that's how we found it. Um, right. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Rare Norb says, where do we plan to camp in California? Um, basically, we plan on driving directly. I think it's the 101 is the uh, Pacific Ho Coast Highway. Whatever it is, the, we just plan on driving that. Um, like I said, I've watched so many RV how-to videos, and, and several of them talk about apps that make it very, very easy to find cap sites that are near you. So we're actually, at this point, kind of going planless. It's kind of the point. We're, we're testing. We're going hardcore. Hey, what's life like if we just play it by ear and just stop wherever we stop and see what we'll see? If we can't find someplace, we'll we'll spend the night at a Walmart parking lot because that's something you can always do in the States. Uh, at Walmarts and Costco's, there's just a standing thing that, hey, RVs can spend the night here. We won't rouse them. No big deal. So that's the fallback, but we're just going to play it by ear using, I forget the name of the app. I've already downloaded it on my phone. And it's one where you can say, hey, where are you? Here's all the options nearby. Here's the prices. Here's what's open here's off season all of that stuff so we're planning on seeing hey just how really flexible and in the moment can we be living this lifestyle so the answer is norb i can't tell you i don't know we'll figure it out as we go is kind of the point um trying to live a life without constantly being stressed about all this stuff just hey let it all go just you know live the nomadic lifestyle okay let's have some non-rv questions uh timmy blue says what what is the best tea game well, I know my wife's answer is always going to be Zolk in the Mind Calendar. Although officially, it's not really a tea game because it was published by uh, Czech Games Edition. Board and Dice um, should really get in touch with Czech Games Edition and see if they can get the rights to it so they can wrap it into the... Uh, so the unofficial one would be Zolk in the Mind Calendar. But it's not Board and Dice, so it's not tea. Um, and I guess you couldn't say Founders of Teotihuacan, right? Because it's an F game. It's um, Teotihuacan is great. Uh, but honestly, uh, at this point, if you can't say founders, I would probably have found a T.O. T.O. Khan. I would say probably Tawan Tinsuyu. I was really blown away by that. However, I did, is it here? No, it's in the other room. I, we did just play and I, just yesterday I filmed, um, uh, Tilatum or yeah, uh, Tilatum, 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 the latest one. And I thought it was great. I would love to spend more time with that game. However, Jen just thought it was so, so. So, you'll get to hear about that when my uh, run-through goes up for it next week. So, I don't think it'll be Teelatum. I think it's probably going to be Tawan Tinsuyu, which is a Turchi game, if I recall correctly. Is that right? All right, though. Okay. What else have we got here? Uh, see, I think we talked about this earlier, Goblin. Yes, I will do... I will... I, I you know, I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk, walk 500 more just to be the channel to cover Star Wars Pandemic. Um, yeah, I mean, I always want to play the newest uh, latest pandemic. Now, if I recall correctly, this is not like all the other pandemic spinoffs in that it was always Matt Leacock working with other designers. I believe this is two completely new designers to the world of pandemic. Is that right? So that gives me a little bit more pause, but really, how badly can you mess up the core pandemic formula that's so well established now? I'd much rather it have been a Star Trek pandemic, but I'll always have Star Trek expeditions for that. Thank you, Reiner Kanitia. So yeah, I certainly hope to cover it. Um, I have not heard from... Oh, Let's see, it's going to be Z-Man, right? Oh, you know what? Z-Man just wrote an email to me the other day about something else. Some other game. I now have an opening to reply saying, Hey, that's really interesting. What about Star Trek Pandemic, please? Or I know that's not the title, but yeah, I'm very excited. I will definitely try to get that played and filmed before the end of the year. Okay. Um, oh, oh, I see. Oh, Goblin really want to know Star Wars Pandemic thoughts. I honestly, I saw it existed and I, I felt, okay, I don't need to spend any time studying this. Because I'm sure it's going to be interesting. It has dice, though, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the um, Star War, the World of Warcraft uh, pandemic, we didn't end up keeping because, as great as it was, and we didn't mind the dice too much, I'd still rather not have dice. And I, I, I believe this one will have dice, so I don't know that it'll be a keeper, but I'm still excited to give it a go. Uh, um, right. Let's see. Oh, going back, I think we had some questions from last week. Is Sagrada playable before you start the campaign? Uh, no, it is not, uh, Goblin. Uh, although, not that you won today, but uh, you... No, yes, it is. It is playable before you start the campaign 
if you come up with some kind of proxy. The first chapter, which is what you saw me play, if you watch my run-through, which I try to be as spoiler-free as possible, I demonstrate a way that you can play the first chapter infinitely, over and over and over again, without making any permanent changes. But it requires a regular copy of Sagrada to have all the colored dice you need as a stand-in for actually using the colored pencils and penciling. So, if you're willing to do that, yes, you could play it. You could play the intro game several times to for the people you play with to get them used to it and all that. But uh, otherwise, now although that's another thing too, you could play it over and over and over and over and over again if you laminate that first sheet. But then you have to go out and get colored pens that match the colored pencils. So you would have to go out and get some you know dry erase and what are the colors? I forget what the colors are: red, purple, yellow blue. So if you got all those and laminated or used a pocket sleeve, I love pocket sleeves so much now, you could play over and over and over again as well. But don't forget, the game actually comes with uh, an extra sheet of paper. So I believe, I haven't seen that because my prototype didn't come with it, but if that works as I expect, you can just laminate those and play with those over and over and over and over and over again, just like any uh, roll and write. So those are all options. Let's see. Has Ruel poked his head in yet? Um... No, he has not. Oh, I guess he must be uh, uh, running into some technical difficulties. All right, well, we'll continue with more questions. And I see it looks like there's some more RV questions. Rare Norb says, or Rare Norb says that they did an RV trip in Oregon, and if you had to do one campsite, it's the Silver Falls State Park. Amazing place and camping experience. Is that on the coast? Because that's where we're coming up. Uh, but I will definitely, well, I just recorded myself saying that, so I'll be able to come back and check this. Thank you for the advice, Rare Norb. Okay. What are the best meals to make in an RV? Well, here's the thing. One of the reasons Jen is excited about the RV lifestyle is um, giving us, giving her, oh, I don't want to say the freedom, because she's free to do whatever she wants, but giving her, giving her the opportunity to give herself permission to say, hey, you know what? I don't have to make meals every, we, we skip breakfast. We always, Jen makes a lunch and she makes a dinner every day. And she's got it down to a science. But we, you know, we're both in our early 50s. We hardly eat out at all anymore. And Jen loves eating out. She loves the idea of one of the things about being in an RV lifestyle is, hey, you know what? We're going to cook less. We're going to eat out more. We're going to eat out a heck of a lot more. And you say, well, how can you do that? If you have an RV, it's going to be way too hard to drive that RV down to whatever the local restaurants are, right? It's a 30-foot behemoth. Well, ultimately, this is a test run. But our ultimate goal is to um, get a tow hitch and a, a towed, a tow-behind car a small little Chevy Spark or uh, uh, Suzuki Reno or something. Some little tiny hatchback. You have to get them as a manual transmission. They can't be automatic. And uh, Or, you know, even, heck, even a little old Jeep. Or uh, even a VW Bug. Uh, that would be awesome. You know, an old one from the 70s or something like that. Kind of an old, cheap beater car that we exist only as a as a runabout, as a shuttlecraft, that once we get wherever we're going, we unhook the car and then we can drive around and see everything that's nearby. We talked a lot about, should we get a Class A or a Class C and tow a car? Or should we get a big monster F-250 and pull a fifth wheel around? And we're just not F-250 type people. Uh, you know, um, but we're, we love little tiny cars. We were actually, it's, we were so disappointed to find out that the, um, what are they, the smart cars, the 4.2s, they're no longer produced in America. Because that's what was our first thought. Oh, we'll get a 4.2. We had one when we lived in England. We loved that little car. So that is the plan. Although not immediately. We're going to do a couple of simple trips. Keep it simple. Make sure we're happy with this before we go to stage two, which is getting a tow behind car and learning the intricacies of that and, you know, getting a shield so it doesn't have rocks kicked up on it and all that. But anyway, long story short, um, all that aside, best meals to make in an RV, bacon and eggs. Um, you, know, on, you know, cooked on the stove. Uh, my, my, I mean, I could eat bacon and eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, seven days a week. Never gets tired for me. Um, of course, we won't have our homegrown eggs when we're on the road, but that's okay. Oh, and hey, I see Ruel says he is live now. Ruel is set up, ready to go. So I've just got three more quick questions. Did I tell Jen about Marvel Champion's Spider-Ham character? It doesn't matter. Spider-Ham is part of the problem. He is much more... The characters have all gotten so much more complex uh, with many keywords and special exceptions. And it's just getting... Jen liked it when we first played the first five characters. And, um, you know, but as it's gone on and the game placates the hardcore people who want more and more complexity over and over again, Jen gets less and less interested in the game, unfortunately. 
Um, all right, okay. For the game sommelier, uh, which you can get with our, you know, Arado points, what if we recommend a game somebody has? Well, so far, nobody's used the game sommelier. I would expect to, when somebody eventually does that and asks us for a recommendation, says, hey, I like these games, what do you recommend? We'll probably do like three to five recommendations. And we'll work with the audience, too, to come up with good recommendations and why. So hopefully we'll come up with, and hopefully we'll answer it when the person asked when they're actually there in the show. So that's the plan. And then, have either of us played Demeter? I have not. It's a roll and write. I really want to try it because I really, really liked Ganymede. Um, was the prequel to it, right? So I'm excited about that. And we're caught up. And so now it is time to close that, open this, and raid Ruel Gaviola. And after you're done with the run through there, folks, I see Ryan is also live. He's probably continuing his Fister Fest. So once you're finished with Ruel, um, you know, go check out Ryan or what have you. But uh, although I'm sure Ruel will have different friends are, are on, I mean, you know, Enjoy. It looks like there's going to be some fun um, board gaming here on Twitch this afternoon, and I'm going to hit the big purple button, and you folks are going to enjoy. I'm, I'm really curious as myself. He actually did a very good job of pitching me on this game. So it looks like we're going to be ready to raid in three, two, one. Raid! Go, 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 go! Please work! Please don't crash! I live in fear of it never working. Twitch.tv slash Ruel Gaviola. Let's see if um, we have appeared. Okay. Oh, he's still in his... Oh, there we go. And okay, he must have gone live because the raid worked. He's wearing his raid hat. Um, It seems to be... Although it doesn't say it's worked. Is it working? Thanks for hanging out. As you go on for the rest of your day, we just did the r, &R show. Our top 10 games we buy right now, uh, thanks to the fun again, our sponsor. A lot of great games on the show, folks. Go check out that site. And uh, I've got another great game for you to uh, show off today. I'm going to be playing Nasi, the uh, Coyote and Crow dice game. This is... Okay, it seems like it worked. Phew. Uh, All right. Um, yep, there we go. All right. Raid complete. R&R over. Remember, folks, next week... If you, I'll be live streaming Great Western Trail, Argentina, and then the week after that, Ruel is going to get up to some hijinks while I am living on the road. But uh, we'll learn more about that in the future. Um, oh no! Somebody just did a game sommelier right now! Delta! But we won't be there to talk about it! Oh dear! Delta! We will... Oh! I can't do it with Ruel! Oh my goodness. Your timing is not... is, is peckable! Um, um, Delta, it is not impeccable. We'll have to deal with this another day because I got to go get to work. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and listening on the podcast. Talk to you later. So long. Bye bye. Bye bye.